and we welcome you to Falcon Stadium on the campus of Cerritos College as tonight SportsNetUSA.net presents Golden West Rustlers football. Tonight it's the 2-1 Rustlers taking on the 1-2 and two Falcons. A tremendous Saturday evening to you wherever you are. Thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of it. Rashawn Haylock here alongside Charles Williams, a newbie to our SportsNetUSA.net family. Charles, welcome aboard. This is a Golden West team coming off of a pretty big win, but they turned the ball over quite a bit last week. Coming into here tonight to, against the Cerritos bunch, got to keep up that momentum, at least from the offensive end, as they were able to score some points last week. Yes, uh, and thank you, uh, Rashawn. I appreciate you uh, guys welcoming me here. And, uh, and it seems like they might be able to do that against the Cerritos defense. Uh, they seem to have problems stopping the team uh, stopping teams uh, with the ball. Manny Cuevas will put it on the tee. He boots it, and we're underway here in Cerritos. Corrali Hall takes it, and he has some space. 30-yard line, 35, pushed out of bounds by Justin Parker. And that's where Cerritos will take over with great field position to start this one. Cerritos, of course, in their home blues from head to toe. Rustlers in their white uniforms, black pants with the black helmets. That was a great run back. Uh, got some good blocking over there on the right-hand side of the field, and it really worked out for them. Uh, they did their job uh, creating that space and hole for them. So enter Quentin Davis, one of the quarterbacks that you'll see here for this Cerritos team. Davis, local product out of St. John Bosco, bounced back from Fresno State, and here he is now as a red shirt freshman, 6'2", 220 pounds. Starts with four wide receivers, one back. He's blown up in the backfield, but the handoff is successful. And coming off this near side is Hall once again, who had that opening kickoff. And Corrali Hall is able to pick up five ahead to the 43-yard line. It's good blocking for them going towards the left. See the guard over there pulled over on the right-hand side. So second and five for Cerritos. Davis with three wide. Stacy Chukwumezi. That name sounds mighty familiar. Wide up to the split to the bottom of your screen, but they throw it to the top of the screen. And there's a pickup of four there. Near a first down, but it'll bring up a third down and one. That was a good catch. And the one thing that's kind of crucial here for Cerritos is that they're uh, gonna have to have some really good blocking. Uh, going up against this uh, Golden West College defense. Kiki Mendoza on the catch there. Third down and one. Just underway here from Cerritos. Davis will hand it off. They'll try the right side again. And Hall trying to get extra yards. I don't think he got it. No, it looked like he came up short. He couldn't get it all there. Damon Roberts leading the charge there. Tyler Vimaona was there as well. And also the quarterback, not afraid to get dirty. Markel Johnson getting in there as well. And they get to the original line of scrimmage, but it's going to be a fourth down and one. The offense, however, is staying on the field. So Frank Mazzotta, longtime head coach for the Cerritos Falcons, rolling the dice here early on. Bold move, very bold move. The deep back is Vincent Brown. And it's going to be a timeout taking our first charge timeout of the game. It's going to be charged against the Rustlers of Golden West. So they'll take a timeout. It comes with 12.57 to play here in this first quarter. Rashawn Haylock alongside Charles Williams. Ed Ford, operations manager here, joining us as well on a tremendous Saturday evening for you. And don't forget, Golden West Ruster football right here on SportsNetUSA.net is brought to you by Miller Toyota of Anaheim, where service and parts is open seven days a week for your convenience. Check out the alignment, brake, and oil change specials on the web at MillerToyotaofAnaheim.com, located at the 91 and Euclid. Miller Toyota of Anaheim supports high school sports, community college sports, and education. Bold move, you just mentioned it, Charles. In your own zone, you're going to go for it on fourth and one early in this ball game here if you're Cerritos. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a very bold move. The coach must see something that uh, he believes his offense can get it. Uh, and in doing so, made uh, Golden State burn a timeout on that. So if you're the Rustlers here, you got to make sure you don't move. 
And they will go on the ground. Looked like he may be stopped, oh. and they are stopped in the backfield. Brown is stopped. That's Joey incredible. Maduena coming up from the secondary and making the tackle there. They faked the quarterback sneak there, and it was Brown trying to get to the outside, so the rustlers get a stop here, and they'll have prime field position, first down and 10 at the 47 of Cerritos. And that was a bold move, but it wasn't a good move. Uh, you would think at this point, at the beginning of the game, you'd want to put the other team in bad field position, which they could have done, uh, but chose not to do so and gave Golden State great field position. So here are the rustlers and Joe Pyle. Out of the pistol, four wide. Pyle looking, near side, pass thrown, tall, but the tall wide receiver in Derek Deese is able to snatch it out of the sky, and he's able to pick up six there. Brings up a second down and four. Offensively for the rustlers from left to right, Nick Sia Tanu'u at the left tackle. Left guard is Brian McCann. Jared Garcia getting the start at center tonight. The right guard, Genesis Kololo, and the right tackle, Tavita Sagopolu. Pile in there at quarterback, sends a man in motion that's Sheldon White to the bottom of your screen. Low snap, but they give it to Rhino Tavai, who gets up the middle and close to a first down. It's going to bring up a third down and about inches. Tavai just got that carry. The wide receivers, Derek Deese, Xavier Smith coming off that tremendous performance a week ago. Sheldon White and Braylon Mouton, the wide receivers for the Rustlers. It looks like they're going right back into the flow of it. They're ready to go to a quick snap. Pyle, quickly under center, tries to sneak it, and he was able to climb that 6-2 frame across the yard marker and pick up a first down at the 35. So the drive continues here for the Rustlers. The thing uh, Golden West is going to have to look out for is that D-line uh, for uh, – Cerritos, because they are a beast on that line, able to get to the quarterback real quick. So that offensive line is really going to have to protect. They get uh, after Pyle. it, don't they? Oh, yes, they do. They send Kahuna Nui in motion. Pyle takes the snap. Looking, throwing, caught Deese again across the 20. And another first down for the Rustlers. Pick up a 15 there as the Rustlers now inside the red zone. And he had plenty of time, plenty of time, able to sit back there, look for the open man. He was able to uh, look across the field and found him and hit him with a nice strike and picked up a good 15 there, uh, Rashawn. Kahuna Nui in the backfield along with Rhino Tavai. Deese goes in motion. He's in the slot. That's something they were going to try this week by putting the big wide receiver Derek Deese in the slot as opposed to being outside. I think they can expose a mismatch with him going up against some of those backers. End around, Ratsliff tries the left side, and he's able to pick up three. It brings up a second down for the Rustlers just outside the 15-yard line. That was a good move. You'd expect something like that to work. But uh, uh, Cerritos College was prepared for that. Their uh, the, uh, linebackers were uh, in the proper place to, to get in the way of that move. Trips to the far side. 10-11 to play here. Quick pass out to that far side. And making the catch and getting it ahead to the 10-yard line before being pile drive to the turf is Sheldon White. Gang tackled there over there on that far side. Leading the charge there for Cerritos. Scrappy Norman, the cornerback out of Sarah, bounced back from Arizona State. That was pure hustle right there. He caught the ball, was able to pick up a few extra yards off of that play. Uh, just by pushing that line forward. P.J. Naofahu also in on the, on the stop. Three wide for Powell. Ratchliff split wide to the top of the screen. Third down and two. High snap. They give it to Rhino Tavai, and he stopped in the backfield. Derek Thomas, the freshman out of Huntington Beach, makes the stop, and looks like this drive is going to come to a halt as they send out the field goal unit. Thomas is a guy out of Huntington Beach. You wonder, how'd this guy get away from Golden West? Well, he was on campus for a little bit, but he decided he wanted to go away from a bunch of his buddies, a bunch of his friends, and, and a new fresh start at Cerritos here, if you will. And that's a good thing. Sometimes you have to get away from people around you and start fresh, and that's what he did, and he's been a beast out here for Cerritos on the defensive line. 
Saul Rodriguez from 30. White to hold it. The kick is up, and it is good. So that turnover on downs from Cerritos turns into three points for the Rustlers as they get on the board first here. Golden West three, Cerritos nothing as you're watching Golden West Rustler football right here on SportsNetUSA.net. Rashawn Haylock alongside Charles Williams, our entire SportsNetUSA.net crew. 8.48 to play here in this first quarter. And that's kind of the, the risk you take, right? You go for it on fourth down, deep in your own zone. You get stopped, and Golden West able to take advantage of it. And they, they didn't get the seven. They get, didn't get in the end zone, but they are able to put three up on the board. That's the thing. I mean, if you're able to put points on the board, you're taking advantage of any mistake the other team made. Cerritos made a big mistake, took a big gamble, and it cost them three points. Puts them in a hole early in this game. So Manny Cuevas will put it on the tee. Hall had that big return to start this game. He's back there along with Ra Ra Ashford, the transfer from Long Beach City. It'll be Ashford this time, taking it at the 15 and starts to his left. Ashford with the cut. Ashford, oh, he's tattooed just shy of the 40-yard line. A big hit and the ball pops out. The ball pops out, but there was a flag on the field also. So we don't know what that flag means out there. The referee threw the flag, and it could be against Golden West, but it appears that it's not. It more likely is against uh, Cerritos College, and they're declining that. A hold against Cerritos, as you just said, Charles, it's declined. Alex Barnes with the big shot there against Ra Ra Ashford. And I tell you what, Ra Ra Ashford is one of the, the fastest quickest backs around but he's listed at 5'9 175 and that's probably generous that's probably those radio <laughs> TV roster numbers he took a shot there right, he coughed got... up the ball and Rustlers will take over at the Cerritos 39 Tavai will try the left side and he's going to be stopped at the 35 yard line nice open field tackle there made by the linebacker Latrell Stearns a freshman out of guard and that's the thing out here with uh, Cerritos College. They make mistakes early. It's going to cost them early. The big mistake was going forward on fourth down, cost them three points. Turnover can cost them even more. They could be down 10 before you know it. Three wide for Powell. And he's going to keep it. Powell dangerous with his legs. He cuts it up, and he's going to be wrapped around the ankles at the 30-yard line. Brings up, once again, another favorable situation for the Russells, a third and shorter. Maybe I spoke too soon. There's a late flag that comes in and looks to be, appear to be something that happened after the play. Cerritos clapping as if this one's going to go against the Rustlers. Could be some form of unsportsmanlike conduct uh, from one of the players out there. Uh, we'll see how the referee calls this here. Right on top of it, unsportsmanlike conduct against the Rustlers. Our white hat tonight, Dwayne Finley. The umpire, Danny Vargas. The headlinesman, Ryan Bressler. Sydney Blue is the line judge. The field judge is Tyler Lindsay. The side judge, Scott Countryman. And the back judge, Ted Sheese. 7.52 to play, so it was going to be a third and two. Ends up being a third down and 17 now. And the Rustlers shooting themselves in the foot. Powell will come out with two receivers to each side. They show pressure. Powell going to step up, buys time, looking to tuck it and run now. Picks up a big block by Diesel on the outside. He's going to be pushed out of bounds at about the 30, and he got it extremely close to that first down marker. He, sh he, he sh needed 17. He got about 16 there. <laughs> he sure did, and that's the one thing about Powell is he's able to get the ball and put it in his hands and still run with it. He's like one of those running backs out there. He's still dangerous out there, just like the running backs. And it looks like they're about to go for it on fourth down right here, uh, Rashawn. Yeah, fourth and one from the 30 is going to be a timeout taken this time by Cerrito. So each time a team <laughs> decides to go for it on fourth down, 
the opposing defense decides, hey, let's burn a timeout and talk about this a little bit. So they'll discuss it, and we'll discuss that last run by Pyle. You mentioned it, Charles. He's very dangerous, very elusive with his legs, had over 100 yards rushing uh, in the loss against Riverside earlier this year. But that's a dimension that he brings to this offense, being able to get things done with his arm, but also, like you just saw right there, with his legs, picking up 16 on the third and 17. You take that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you got a guy who's able to uh, throw the ball and be accurate with it and, and keep the uh, defense honest, but then able to still skirt out there in the middle of the field and hit the sidelines uh, and, and forcing them to come uh, chase after him because he obviously has some speed, uh, it causes a whole other dimension for the uh, defense. It's just another nightmare they have to deal with. Uh, concerning the quarterback and coming up at the half we'll talk to head coach Nick Mitchell and he has some very interesting things to say about Joe Powell make sure you stick around for that at the half first quarter action 714 to play fourth and one pile to hand it off Rhino to buy that second effort may have got it I don't know it looks like they're about a yard short on that it seems like they're gonna end up turning the ball over on downs also so the fourth down conversion unsuccessful there. And the Rustlers now this season, just three of eight on fourth downs after that last failed conversion. This is something that bothers me. And not just with the Golden West coaching staff. I'm talking about in football in general. You get these spread offenses, everything's in the shotgun. A fourth down and one, it's almost like you need to be under center in that situation, right? Absolutely. You should be under center. You should be push, uh, pushing the ball forward uh, and, and make the keep the defense honest on that. But when you're not doing that, uh, you're just making it a little bit easier for them to uh, make that choice and know what you're going to do with the ball. Yeah, everybody in the world knows you're going to run the ball in that situation as Chuck Wumezi picks up the reception there picks up a gain of seven on the first down play for Cerrito. Stacy Chukwemezi, yeah, I'm sure Rustler fans have been having nightmares about this young man hearing that name over the last 365 days. He was the difference in the game last year. Seven to three win for Cerritos at Labar Stadium, and it was Chukwemezi with a 93-yard touchdown reception that ended up being the only touchdown of the game for either team and the winning score for Cerritos. They go to the ground one more time it's going to be brown getting the carry up the gut picks up a first down and more as cerritos continues to move the sticks going back to chuck wimizi for a second that 93 yard touchdown uh, that he had last year against the rustlers that tied the school record uh, with michael willie for the longest touchdown reception in school history last week he broke that record with a 95 yard touchdown reception against palomar in the win the guy has some serious serious wheels under six to play here, first quarter. Davis will hand it off. Nice cut back there from Brown. In the second level across midfield and down just shy of the 45-yard line as he picks up 11 on first down. And Cerritos continues to move those sticks. And this is what Cerritos should really be focusing on right now is uh, getting the ball into their running back's hands, let them push the ball. The only issue they have is that they uh, – have a problem letting go of the ball. Uh, and you don't want that uh, happening with your running backs or anybody who has their hands on the ball. A stable of running backs for this Cerrito squad. They go to the ground one more time. Brown, not nearly as much success as that second effort got him barely back to the original line of scrimmage. Damon Roberts in there on the stop, leading the charge. Also, Avery Jones, the talented linebacker for the Rustlers. But Corrali Hall, we've heard from him already. Vincent Brown, you see how shifty he can be. Ramondre Stevenson may be the best one. We haven't even seen or heard from him yet. And Ray Ray Ashford, who, Rara Ashford, pardon me, who was on that last kick return and took that big wallop and coughed it up. We haven't seen him on offense yet. But here's the pass out to Hall, and Hall's got some wheels. And he's got some green in front of him. Hall inside the 25 and pushed out of bounds. Just shy of the 20. Yeah, that was a great, great call right there. They used Chuck Lamese as a, a decoy, ran him back towards the end to the middle of the field. He uh, ended up picking up a great block and freeing him up going on the outside. And when he did that, it left a lot of open uh, space out there. And he picked up a few more great blocks and got all the way down to the 22-yard line. So a pickup of 23 there. 
First down and 10. Falcons deep inside wrestler territory for the first time tonight. And there's going to be some movement up front. So we'll hear from Dwayne Finley once again. It's going to be against Cerritos. And that'll move him back five yards. So is that Quentin Davis? Is he back in uh, the game here for yes. uh, Quentin Davis still in there at at a quarterback? He takes the snap there, delivers far side. He overshot the intended wide receiver Zenovian Kennedy that time. And not only did he overshoot him, he was double covered. It didn't look like he was really uh, looking at see where the defensive people were out there. And that was just a bad throw uh, in a bad situation. Davis shaking up a little bit after that play. He was a little gimpy, but stays in there and returns to the huddle. 3.55 left, first quarter. Rustlers three, Cerritos nothing. Three wide for Quentin Davis. Hall gets the carry. And Hall's going to pick up three there. It is set up a third down and 12. The Golden West defensive line versus the Cerritos offensive line appears to be a strength for the Rustlers, but so far it's been the Falcons' O-line controlling uh, the trenches there and being able to get it done with the running game. That's the one thing you look at for uh, Cerritos and, and Golden West. Cerritos, uh, their O-line is pretty strong, and Golden West, uh, their D-line really hasn't been doing a lot uh, they haven't picked up a whole lot of sacks or anything uh, during the course of play within the last three games. And wrestlers bought the heat there that time as Davis was able to step up in the pocket. But Tyler Viamaona got extremely close to him that time. So the third down play is an incompletion. Brings up fourth and 12. Davis will come off, enter Isaiah Bravo. He'll do the holding for Cerritos as they'll attempt a 40-yard field goal. I talked to Frank Mazzotta earlier today. He said he doesn't know about 40. Not sure he wanted to try that or not, but he sends the kicker out for it regardless. And this one going to be blocked. Picked up by the Rustlers at the 25-yard line. So the Rusters come up with a huge field goal block there, and they hold on to the three to nothing lead. And you can see it, you know, looked like it was kind of a bad snap, uh, and it was a low kick. And uh, he should have got a little air underneath there. Especially from 40, right? Especially from 40. Uh, but then you see that uh, Golden West was just pressing the line, and they were able to get inside and uh, block that kick. Three oh seven, first quarter. As the Rusters will take over, worst field position of the game for them in this early going. Pile delivers to the flat, a spin move out there by Sheldon White as he's able to crawl to the line of scrimmage, but nothing doing there on first down. And they're able to see that coming from a mile away. Uh, the defensive player was right there on it and uh, shut it down immediately. He was able at least to get back to the line of scrimmage. Kevin Jones checks in there at a wide receiver. Lines up to the top of the screen. Trips to the far side. Quick pass out to White again. Has some blocking in front of him. Gets across the 30 into the 31-yard line. A pickup of six there. Brings up a third down and four as we're under two and a half to play here in this first quarter. Rashawn Haylock alongside Charles Williams. Great Saturday evening to you right here on SportsNetUSA.net. And you notice they've been running that play at least a few times, three or four times, and it's been pretty much successful. Uh, Cerrito's going to have to buckle down and figure out how to stop that play. And Fun. Pyle just drops it there. And it's recovered by Cerritos. 
And that's one of the things uh, we were saying earlier, uh, Rashawn, is that fumbles and turnovers are are going to be a, a big thing here for Golden, Golden West and for Cerritos. And it seems like whoever wins the turnover battle will probably win this game. And that was just a straight drop of the ball. It hit him right in the hands. It wasn't over his head. It was straight to him. He just dropped it and couldn't hold on to it. Jordan Thomas, the defensive end, gets the fumble recovery there. And you mentioned he, he took the snap and he was trying to adjust it in his hands and just dropped it. And John Ship, the offensive coordinator, is two booths to our left. He's got to be livid right now. It's something he and I actually talked about pregame on the field earlier tonight about no turnovers. And this one could be costly deep inside of their own territory. Davis going to run with it. And he took a helmet-to-helmet -helmet shot, and it was a Russell's helmet who popped off there that time. Joey Maduena, he's going to have to step off because his helmet came off. So he'll have to sit out a play. But Davis gets it ahead to the 22-yard line. That was, a, that was a heck of a hit. Uh, when he came in there, they, that was a collision. Uh, that was just heavy. You can just hear it all the way up here. Second and five, high snap. They give it to Stevenson. Off right guard, a first down and more, down to the 14-yard line. Ramondre Stevenson, freshman out of Centennial High School in Nevada. Each of these backs last week, interestingly enough, all four of them, each had eight carries apiece. It was Stevenson and Hall, the only ones to reach the end zone. Stevenson, 76 yards and a touchdown last week. And you see that uh, uh, Cerritos like to spread it out a little bit, let the wear the defense down with different uh, ball carriers. Davis going to keep it himself, second level, dragging defenders inside the five and down at the four. Well, that fooled him. Fooled me also because I thought the, <laughs> the running back had the ball. He ended up keeping the ball and going all the way down to the two-yard line. Is that the two or the five? They mark it at the four, four officially. So a first down there, and it's going to be – well, let's see. First down marker would have been the four-yard line. Either he's going to be an inch short or it's going to be first – or they drop the chain. So it's going to be first down and go. So first and go for Cerritos as we're under 45 seconds to play here in this first quarter. And on Cerritos been pretty good, I believe, in the red zone uh, with the ball. So if they've been pretty good here – uh, they're going to get it. They get there at least 50% of the time. They roll it out. Pass is thrown. Caught. End zone Cerritos. Ra Ra Ashford, who's back in there after getting banged up on that kickoff return earlier. He gets the touchdown. And Cerritos takes a 6-3 to three lead. Banged up, however, is a Cerritos player, Asher Klassen, the left tackle. And they can ill afford to have an offensive lineman go down. Can the Falcons. You see the swinging gate here for Cerritos on special teams. They don't see an advantage, so they'll line up for a traditional point after. But hold everything. There's a flag that comes in from the far corner of the end zone. And actually, before the flag, they call a timeout. So a timeout charge to Golden West. Now they had the whole, pretty much the whole offensive line on the left side. Uh, and when they shifted over, caused some confusion over there with Golden West. And Golden West burns another timeout. We haven't even hit the second quarter yet. Yeah. And we're just 25 seconds away from that. And if it gets any closer, uh, what are you going to do if you don't have any timeouts, yeah. if you're down to the last two minutes of the game you talk about or the quarter? You talk about a last, uh, last chance situation here in the half. You, you, it may come back to haunt you. So just one timeout left for the Rustlers here in this half. Cerritos has two left, in case you're wondering. 25 seconds left on the clock, first quarter action. Cerritos on a touchdown pass from Davis to Ashford. Now has a 6-3 to three lead with a point after attempt pending. They try the swinging gate one more time, but no advantage seen. So they're lined up for the traditional point after attempt. Beto Avila to attempt the point after. High snap, but Avila is able to kick it through. So Cerritos 7, 
Golden West 3. As you're watching Golden West Wrestler Football right here on SportsNetUSA.net, Rashawn Haylock alongside Charles Williams here. Turnovers have been the name of the game. Cerritos turned it over on downs. That led to three points for the Rustlers. Rustlers turned it over deep in their own zone on a fumble from quarterback Joe Pyle. Cerritos able to cash that in for seven. And that's the difference right now. 25 ticks left here in this first quarter. One thing about the Rustlers last week, they did turn the ball over four times, but fortunately for them, they were all deep inside opponents' territory. This time they turned it over deep in their own zone, and that's, that speaks trouble each and every time. It speaks trouble each and every time, uh, and when you're turning the ball over on your side of the field, uh, you're leaving the team open to, to score points. Uh, as I said before, uh, Cerritos College, uh, they when they get in the red zone, they score at least... 75% of the time, and when they're scoring that often, uh, you're, you're about to lose points and on, on your side and just give up too many points and possibly lose the game. Yeah, they're now 7 of 9 in the red zone on this season after that last touchdown. Here is Markel Johnson, and he takes a big shot. So the special teams on both sides have come to play today as Johnson gets walloped at the 20 yard line that big hit made by david walker on the special teams for the falcons now these guys out here on special teams are really hitting uh, they're really just laying each other out and and that's where you might find a lot of fumbles and turnovers coming uh, just because of these guys the way they're hitting out there on special teams 18 events around the scfa tonight this the final game to kick off on this Saturday. Golden West and Cerritos. High snap, how almost lost that one again. He's able to handle it and hand it off, but not much running room at all there. As that was Tavon Valdez getting his first carry of the game. And it looks like that's going to take us to the end of the first quarter. So after one, Cerritos seven. Golden West 3 as you're watching Golden West Russell Football right here on SportsNetUSA.net. Rashawn Haylock alongside Charles Williams. Ed Ford providing all the visuals for you on this Saturday evening as the Rustlers trying to improve on their 2-1 record. Cerritos, meanwhile, trying to get to 500 as they enter tonight 1-2. and two. But they've played some very talented teams. L.A. Valley, a lower division team, but... They have one of the longest win streaks in the state, uh, does L.A. Valley. Of course, SportsNetUSA.net, also the home of L.A. Valley football. So you can check, check them out here as well. And then also, last uh, two weeks ago, they just got molly whopped by Fullerton, the defending state champions, 46-9 to the final score on that one. So they had to go all the way down to San Diego to pick up their first win with the win against Palomar. And this is pretty much identical to what happened to them a season ago. They entered this game against Golden West with a 1-2 and two record, but they were able to get to 500 with a win last year. That game, of course, played at Labard. Rustlers trying to have a different outcome here tonight. They flip field, so the Rustlers will be going right to left here for this final quarter of this first half. Second down and 10 for Golden West the 20-yard line. Second and 10. Pile in there at quarterback. He has Valdez to his right. Four wide receivers. Looks at Valdez, has him in the flat, makes the catch, tries to bounce off one guy, and picks up three there ahead to the 23-yard line. Third down and seven coming up for Golden West. And Golden West is getting a little comfortable with those, those screen passes out to the, to the flats. And it uh, seems like Cerrito is picking up on that. And if they're picking up on it, you're going to have to throw the ball downfield and try to uh, pick up some yards like they did at the very beginning of the game when uh, they got that ball. Looks like he's got man coverage on the outside. If he wants, it does pile. Steps up. Has to escape one of his own linemen. And, oh, big time shot as he just got sandwiched there. Thomas the defensive end got to him, Jordan Thomas, the one who had the fumble recovery earlier. And that's the thing about Cerritos College, as I was saying earlier, is that that D-line is a beast. They get to the quarterback, uh, and when they do, 
uh, you're dead meat. And that's what happened there uh, with, uh, with the quarterback. He was dead meat. He had nowhere to go. He ended up running back and just getting caught. James Ball went in to punt. And this one a high punt, but not very far at all. Takes a rustler bounce and dribbles across midfield into Cerritos territory. But they'll have a first down and 10 at their own 48. And that's one thing with Ball when he has a pro leg. But it's just the consistency that has plagued him at times. I mean, he'll kick some out of this atmosphere. And then he'll kick some other ones that may be high and not very far some that he may just shank, but if he can if he can be consistent, and multiple members of his coaching staff thinks yeah, he, he can he can make some money kicking the ball. Yeah, I was out here watching him earlier, and he was he was nailing them, hitting them high, hit some long ones. Uh, but like you said, he shanked some to the left and to the right. Davis, and he's sacked in the backfield. That was a good power rush there by the uh, Golden West D-line. They got straight up in there, pushed that O-line of Cerritos College to the side and got right to the quarterback. Silas Collins on the sack for Golden West. A loss of five brings up a second down and 15. Davis will go under center this time. They try the ground game, and ah, uh, ah, uh, game tackled there by the Rustlers is the tailback, Ra Ra Ashford. They got right in there. They saw that play coming. Uh, it was no fooling them. They weren't going to throw the ball. It didn't look like they were going to throw the ball. It was a straight run. They read it perfectly and caught him right there in the backfield. Desmond, up a loss for him. Desmond Posse, Gamon Howard amongst the white jerseys to get in the backfield. Third down, and actually give him positive yards there, so it brings up a third down and 12. Davis, pressure coming, steps up, and nearly picked off. Almost picked off. That was close. That pa was really close. Posse reading that one well. He got right in there, stepped up, almost a turn, another turnover for uh Cerritos, and like I said, this is a this is a thing that's going to plague both of these teams. These turnovers, and they just have to be really careful about what they're doing with the ball. So Markel Johnson will park at his twelve. I'm sure Cerritos has seen what number nine can do on film. Let's see if they give him a chance. It's a low line driver that's gonna dribble. Johnson gonna take it on a hop. Not necessarily the best decision there and he's hit immediately. Nice job there on the special teams by Cerritos. And making the stop there was Aaron Jones. Yeah, taking the ball on a hop right there. You're taking a chance. Sometimes it's just better to let it go, but he was able to get it and just fall down on it and uh, try to keep them in at least decent field position. Golden West football right here on SportsnetUSA.net is brought to you by Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Save with new car specials with factory rebates of $2,000 on select 2017 Corollas, including the LE and special edition models. On the web at MillerToyotaOfAnaheim.com. Located at the 91 and Euclid, Miller Toyota of Anaheim supports high school sports, community college sports, and education. First down play is on the ground and a pickup of one there. With the ground game for the Rustlers, Rhino Tavai off that right side. They're just trying to push it up the middle. Give that old line, let them just push the running back through. Uh, give a, Make that uh, defensive line for Cerritos, tire them out just a little bit. Tavai hasn't really found many openings here in the early going, but he's a guy who had some slow starts, but he normally gets stronger as the game goes along. He'll try that right side once again, and he'll pick up two. Third down and six coming up for the Rustlers as we approach 11 to play in this first half. Yeah, they're running it over there to the right side once again. Really not much out of it. They're just trying to wear that decent defensive line out. Uh, but they're going to have to take some shots down the field. Uh, 
letting that quarterback put it in wide receiver's hands and see if they can really get make up some yardage downfield. Third and six. Pyle stepping up, buying time, throwing incomplete. He had nobody open there. Uh, he threw it way behind the receiver. Like the receiver was cutting in, and it was there was nothing there. Threw it behind him. Just threw it away, basically. Uh, he had nothing because he was on the run and uh, couldn't get it to nobody. So he, he made a good move, let them kick the ball away and see if they can put Cerritos in a bad field position at least a little bit. Mouton, the intended target there, and, and, and fortunate for him, didn't come up with an offensive pass interference there. He looked like he grabbed the defender there to impede his progress from going after that interception. Here's Baldwin one more time and puts a leg into this one. Broken tackle. Here comes Hall, near side. Hall, They're going to be taken down at the 40-yard line. And Jones making the stop on special teams, but there's a couple of flags on the play against Cerritos. Looks like it's probably going to be a holding call or uh, a push in the back from Cerritos because the, the runner was running backwards. He wasn't running forward. And if you're going to run back, you're not going to get the kind of blocking you, you should get end up picking up penalties on your team. And check that. That was Dior Denson on the punt return there for Cerritos. This one going to go against the Falcons. And that'll move them deeper into their own zone. First down and 10 from their own 27-yard line. Frank Mazzola, senior, 40th season at the helm as the head coach for the Cerritos Falcons. And continues to do it. I spoke with him earlier today. He told me just the relationships that he's able to build with a lot of his former players, them being able to come back. He said he played J.C. football. He never once went back to visit. But it's a joy for him to be able to see all his players throughout the years come back and visit him. Expecting some 15 players from his very first team to be on the sidelines tonight as Hall gets the carry. And Hall going to be swung out of bounds Across the 35 at the 37. Yeah, that looked, almost looked like it was a face mask there. Close but, to it. Or uh, a horse collar. Horse collar. Uh, and the referees didn't see that. Uh, or it wasn't. And we just missed it. <laughs> Nick Mitchell, of course, on the other side for the Rustlers in his 12th season. And he also had some thoughts about Coach Mazzota. Don't want to spoil it for you. You'll hear it at the half. But... One of the things for him was sort of a head scratcher. Is how do you how do you continue to do this for decade upon decade upon decade? Hall stop for a loss. Golden West is getting right up in there, and look stopping out. the run. Getting a little chippy in the backfield there. <laughs> you hit him for a loss, and uh, Golden West is really getting into it here, um, stopping Cerritos College from pushing the ball forward. David Siliuta, first time we've called his name tonight, but you talk about a bright spot for this defense in the early part of this season. Big number 91, he's certainly been that. Approaching nine to play here in this second quarter. Seven to three, our score. New quarterback in there for Cerritos. It's Bravo, takes the snap, delivers downfield, has a man caught! 30-yard line and pushed out of bounds inside the 20. Now, they just did what uh, Golden West should be doing. They pushed the ball downfield, uh, went deep with it, left it up to the receiver. He was one-on-one, -on -one, caught the ball. He was wide open. There was nothing left for Golden West to do except try to get to him and push him out of bounds. Justin Garrett, and he just beat Justin Ford on that play. Just a streak right down the sideline, and Bravo let it fly. First and 10 at the Rustler 19-yard line. They go to the ground one more time. Hall squeezes through the hole, a hurdle into the second level and down at the 10, a first down pickup. Well, let's see. They mark him just shy of that first down marker. So it brings up a second down in inches. Second down and one for Sweden. Well, they're in the red zone. And when you're in the red zone, you have to do something with it. Uh, and Golden West, they've been 4 of 15 when they're in the red zone. Uh, so that's only a 27% uh, chance. Well, I'm sorry, that's uh, 
three of those scholars. Then when they're in the red zone, yeah, they get in there seven and five. Now. Yeah. And they tried a little zone read there, and the rushers all on top of it. Damon Roberts leading the charge. Silas Collins there as well to stop Bravo for a loss. Isaiah Bravo, the other half of this two quarterback system for Frank Mazzotta, Cerrito Falcons. Six, 385 pound freshman out of West Covina. He's young. Frank Mazzotta described him as being just a puppy, but he has all the talent in the world you could want from a quarterback, but maturity. Not quite there, not quite what you would want from the quarterback position. Which is the reason why he hasn't just taken the job. But here he is with a touchdown pass as he finds a wide open Ramondre Stevens in the flat. And just like that, it's a double digit lead here for Cerritos. Nobody accounted for number three out of the backfield. And he walked in. He was wide open on that. Golden, Golden West wasn't ready for it. Swinging gate, no advantage seen. So Beto Avila will line up for the traditional point after. Bravo will stay in to hold it. Extra point is good. 14 to 3, the score here from Falcon Stadium. Cerritos on top, 7 12 to play in this second quarter. Rashawn Haylock alongside Charles Williams here, and that drive all set up by the big completion from Bravo to Justin Garrett. Boy, did he ever let it fly. You talk about the arm talent. It seemed like that ball was in the air forever. And he threw it up there. He threw it high, but he threw it accurately. He hit the, the receiver on the in run. In stride. In stride. Perfect throw. He hit him, and he had open field in front of him. The only thing that kept him from scoring was he got pushed out of bounds. Elsewhere around the SCFA, as you saw earlier today here on SportsNetUSA.net, Fullerton improving a 4-0. With a 49 to 23 win over Mount Sac, handing the Mounties their first loss of the season. LA Valley on top of Glendale, 14 nil at the half. Santa Ana falling to Hancock, 50 to 35 out at Eddie West Field. Games in progress right now. Elac trailing San Diego Mesa down in the 619, seven to nothing. Here, back come the rustlers the other way. There's a flag as Baldwin. It's been a point of emphasis to try to get him a little bit more involved in the kickoff returns. He gets it up to the 34-yard line, but let's see if this penalty is going to negate some of that return for the rustlers punter slash DN slash safety slash kick returner. Uh, you know, when the flag comes from the referee from the back, you know it's either a push or a hold. Uh, and it's usually going to go against the team returning the ball. Oh, Personal foul against the Rustlers. It's even worse. Yeah, 15-yarder. So they'll mark this one back at the 10-yard line. Uh, you've been asking for it, Charles. This Rustler offense needs to let it fly. They need to open it up a little bit. Strike down the field to their wide receivers. That will open up the running game for them. But uh, they've been going to these to the flats, and here they go. Is uh, Pyle over here trying to run the ball? Uh, but Cerrito seems like they're ready for it once again. Yeah, nobody open downfield, nowhere to go. So 16 tucks and runs for three. Second and seven for Golden West from their own 13-yard line. Some hesitancy on, on the part of the Rustlers offensively. They go to the ground. Here's Tavai. Tavai lowering the boom. Stays on his feet, but he lost the ball. It goes out of bounds, however. Fortunate for him, and, and as powerful as a back as he is, his one shortcoming, ball security. It's another fumble for Tavai. He fumbled it last week. Also had a fumble. He's fumbled in every game now. He had a fumble against Glendale. Had a fumble against Riverside. Fumbled last week as well against Chafee. This one, fortunately for him, dribbled out of bounds. But 
you got to keep that thing high and tight. You got to keep it high and tight, put a little more stick them on your hands, do whatever you got to do to hold on to that ball because you can't be fumbling it. And lucky he fumbled it and it went out of bounds. Uh, but he's got to really secure that thing. Third and four. Pyle looking far side. Pass caught. 25-yard line and falling forward to the 27 is Jones. So a first down for Golden West as they get a little bit more breathing room, but still deep inside their own zone here. First and 10 at the, actually mark it down at the 26-yard line. And see, they caught him on a slant. So they're pushing the ball downfield with that pass. So they got to keep doing that. Powell looking this side. And dangerous pass there. It's caught, however. Xavier Smith, first time we've called his name tonight. Big game for Smith last week. Ten catches, over 100 yards. Also had a couple of touchdown grabs as well. It looked like 16-4. and four. Had found quite the chemistry last week, but first time we've called Smith tonight. Picks up six there. And the stoppage in play comes from our white hat, Dwayne Finley. And you see the officials reaching for their ears. They have that O2O communication, pretty much microphones and earbuds in each ear. They can communicate with each other without having to huddle every single time. So whatever the situation was, they got it cleared away. They send White in motion. Pyle going to keep this one. Has some room. Near side. Pyle across the 40. Slides at the 44-yard line. A pickup of eight there and a first down for the Russell quarterback. And that's the thing with Pyle. He starts using those feet, getting out of the pocket. Uh, it brings a headache to the Cerritos defense because uh, now they have to cover him on the ground also. But now you want to see him do do it more with his arm, though. He's been efficient in the past game this season, has Pyle. But as you mentioned it, they need to take some shots. And it's somewhat of a, an emphasis for this staff. They know those shots are going to be there. Pyle hit as he throws, but has a man downfield caught. 40-yard line inside of Cerrito's territory. It's Ben Rasliff takes a shot. At the 36-yard line, but a first down and more. That was a great pass, great look. And he caught the ball right there on that, that, that slide in. And when he caught it there, he had a lot of open field and able to move down the field to pick up another first down. A pickup of 20 there and a first down and 10 from the Falcon 36-yard line. Approaching four to play here in this second quarter. They fake the end around. They give it to Tavai. He bounces off one, but he's going to be wrapped up in the backfield. Nowhere to go there that time. Heavy pursuit by the linebacker, Sean Swain, the freshman out of La Mirada, taking Tavai down for a loss. And it seems like Cerrito is dialed in on the run on Golden West. They are, right? Uh, and Golden West, I would you just keep hitting them downfield, uh, hit them on the slants, hit them. Uh, take shots down the field, go for the, the, the big play because uh, they're really dialed in on that run and not giving up anything. Loss of five, second and 15. They put Smith in motion. They fake the end around. Pressure coming. They try to set up the screen, but it's thrown at the shoe tops of Tavai incomplete as pressure was coming right in the face of Pyle that time in the form of Derek Thomas. You got the Thomas brothers, one on each end, and both have made an impact so far here in this game for Cerritos. Derek Thomas, the freshman out of Huntington Beach, wearing uniform number 11. And opposite him is Jordan Thomas, the freshman out of Norwalk. 11 and 56, folks, causing trouble here tonight for the Rustlers. And that's the thing with uh, Cerritos. They, that line is a beast. They know how to get in there and get to the quarterback. And here they go once again. They set up the screen pass, thrown tall to Vice Satchins out the sky. He gets a little bit past the original line of scrimmage. Picks up seven there. And now you're in that territory where too short to punt, maybe a little bit too long for a field goal. Offense going to stay on the field on fourth down and seven. Under three to play here in this second quarter. Four wide, Pyle looking on a slant. Dees had it, lost it, incomplete. Well, if you're going to go for it, that's kind of the place to do it. 
You don't do it on the other on your side of the field. You do it on the other side, other opponent's field. And uh, they went for it. Didn't pay off for them. Uh, you figure that the kicker probably wasn't going to be able to hit it from there. And like you said, if they punted, they probably would have gone into the end zone and gave them the ball at the 20. Yeah, and, and even if Deese holds on to that, I'm not sure if he gets the first down anyway. First down for three no. The ball was thrown short of the first down marker, and the defense was right there. Isaiah Bravo will stay in at quarterback four. Cerritos, he has three wide. Bravo going to keep it himself, and he's going to be wrapped up. Ball's out. Ball's on the turf. Looks like rustlers have recovered it. They say that they have, and they have. So just like that, the rustlers are able to force a turnover, and it was a similar situation for this same quarterback, Isaiah Bravo, in the opener against L.A. Valley, deep in his own zone. He just dropped it. Ball was scooped up and scored by L.A. Valley en route to that 25-14 to 14 win. He's had some ball security issues this season, and it was prevalent right there as the rustlers were able to take, take it over first down and 10 at the Cerritos 29-yard line. And that's an issue for, for both of these teams. They're just uh, butterfingers out there. Pyle with four wide. Plenty of time. Going to tuck it and run. Has some green. 25. Turns the corner at the 20. Pyle tiptoeing the sideline. Just shy of the 10 out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Uh, this is where Golden West is going to have to buckle down. Uh, they haven't been great in the red zone. Uh, so they're going to have to really buckle down and push the ball uh, and do something uh, to find them uh, seven or find them six uh, in the end zone uh, to bring this score a little bit closer before halftime. Just two of seven this season converting red zone opportunities into touchdowns are the rustlers. And we're going to have a timeout taken by Cerritos. Their second charge timeout of this half. So they have one timeout left. Rustlers have one timeout left in this half. 2.03 to play second quarter. Cerritos 14, Rustlers 3, but Golden West knocking on the doorstep with a first down and 10 at the Falcon 11-yard line. You know, when you when you look at these teams on paper, you kind of look at and see that uh, Golden West would probably pull this game out. And when I, when I looked at it on paper, I figured that Golden West uh, would probably take the game easily. Uh, but then when you look at the Cerritos College and you look at their D-line, uh, you see that those guys are going to be a around. problem. They're yeah. flying around, coming and getting over at Pyle, uh, making it a little bit harder for him to get the ball downfield. Uh, but here's a great opportunity for them to put seven on the board uh, to bring this score a little bit closer to 14 to 10 if they're able to do that uh, and make this game a little bit closer for them and be able to make it easier for them in the second half. Yeah, Rustlers 3 of 7 in the red zone this season, which is last in the Southern League, but only 2 of 7 in terms of converting red zone opportunities into touchdowns. Pyle, going to keep it himself, tries to turn the corner and does, has a block, and it's going to be a block in the back on Deese. Blatant block in the back, right in front of the official. There was no one there to, 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 to block him from the official. And Dee's having a hard time with the penalties here this evening. That's going to be number two on him if, in fact, this stands the way we think it's going to go. Let's see what Dwayne Finley says. We saw that. It was pretty evident from yeah. here. Yeah. As, as the late the great Chick Hearn would say, you could call it with Braille. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, man. And that's costly. I mean, they were right there. He had them uh, going, out, going out of bounds right about the five-yard line or so and being able to take it in. But here it is, another costly penalty brings them back out over to the 20-yard line. Uh, it's a spot of foul play. So it's going to be a first and 19 for the Rustlers now from the Cerritos 20. Pressure right in the face of Powell. Nowhere to go. Untouched, unblocked was Derek Thomas that time. The defensive end, but he was on his feet that time. He lined up as the linebacker and shot straight through the gap right into the face of number 16, and no one on that old line accounted for him. No one touched him. He 
he could have skipped through. He could have crawled through there. It was so easy for him to get all the way through. And no one picked him up, cost them more yards. Loss of six, second and 25. Pyle. Pressure coming again. They try to set up a screen. This pass thrown, deflected. A penalty flag is going to come in, and this may be a gift for the Rustlers. The cornerback there coming up and making the play was Josh Caldwell, but did he get there a little too early? Let's see what Dwayne Finley says. Rustlers think this is going to be against Cerritos. And it probably will be. And uh, you see that there was a push. There it is. Pass interference against the Falcons. Half the distance. First down for the Rustlers. Once again, penalties. So I, if, any, if anybody's breathing a little bit easier now, it's got to be number 11, Derek Deese, right? After oh, he yeah. called for that block <laughs> in the back. He's like, all right, they saved me here. He's feeling a little bit better, but yep. he shouldn't feel too good. Not too good, yeah. right? Shouldn't feel too good because they still got to fight for those yards they already lost off of that penalty. So... Let's see where they mic it. Dwayne Finley told me before the game, he's like, I don't have a mic for you tonight, so <laughs> you got to watch me. I'm trying to watch you. Couple more left, first down and 10 at the 20-yard line. So first down and 10 at the 20. So I guess they call it just a spot of foul. Spot of they, they, they spot it right where the foul Right occurs, where the foul was. And they give them the first down. So first and 10 from the 20. So as you mentioned, Derek D's not breathing that much easier. Pressure coming. Pyle keeps it himself on the outside. Pyle at the 12 yard line, picks up eight there, brings up a second and two. John Ship, two booths to the left of us, looks to be calling for tempo, but it's not translating to the field. Under a minute to play here. Rustlers do got to hurry. Time is just ticking. 45 seconds and counting in this first half. Nick Mitchell coming up at the half. Don't want to miss that. Pyle steps up. And he's going to be uh, taken down at the 10, but a flag comes in. Looks like it might be a holding call there on the offensive line. It's going to be a hold against the Rustlers. Another costly mistake. Keeps pushing them back. You're losing valuable time and potential points. If you're not going to have the time to get those points, you're going to walk back right into the, the Thir locker room with three points. Third, under 30 seconds left. Cerrito still running guys in on defense. Pyle in the seam. A diving catch is made at the five-yard line. Sheldon White, a tremendous catch. Pyle gets him on the ball. And he's going to spike it at the six-yard line. So it brings up a second and goal from the six. Just ten ticks left, though, in this half, however. What a catch by Sheldon White. That was a great catch. It was a great pass. He caught it down low. Uh, only one who could get it was him. So the only one who could get it was White. No one else. He caught the ball right there on the move uh, and was able to slide and pick up those very valuable yards that they had already lost previously. Ratsliff, the lone receiver to the bottom of your screen, four wide, four. Pyle, he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage if he wants it. Ten seconds left, second and goal from the six. Pyle, looking, end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Rustlers. Derek Deese making up for that block in the back was wide open in the back of the end zone. And he's able to catch the touchdown reception from Pyle. And the rust was within five with the point after attempt pending. Three seconds left here in this first half. I mean, that was a, a heck of a throw, but a heck of a catch because it was low. And he was able to catch that low and bring it in. So another flag against the Rustlers, illegal substitution. <laughs> so this is going to make the point after about five yards longer. Rustlers will receive the second half kickoff, in case you're wondering. Cerritos won the toss and elected to receive. 
point after attempt is good. So Rustlers within four, 14 to 10 our score on sportsnetusa.net. Three seconds left in this second half. Let's go back to that touchdown reception from Pyle to Derek Deese in the back of the end zone. Looked like Cerritos was caught in a zone there and, and, and Deese just found the sweet spot. He found a sweet spot. He was standing there pretty much all by himself. Jumping jacks, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at me. I'm wide open. And he got him the ball, and it was kind of almost questionable there because I didn't know if he caught it. But he was able to go down and pull the ball up, and it was a good catch. And the referees called it a touchdown. And that touchdown is very valuable right now because instead of being down 14 to 3, uh, it's only 14 to 10. Uh, and you can see how uh, that early call by Cerritos uh, at the very beginning of the game uh, could help Golden West towards the end of this game when it comes down to needing to score another touchdown. Talk about that, that failed fourth that down failed conversion. That failed fourth down conversion. Hall and Ashford deep to receive it. It's going to be Hall. Comes near side. Hall going to be taken down at the 23-yard line, and that is going to be the final play of the half. Cerritos 14, Golden West 10. That last drive, Joe Pyle was able to show us what he can do with his legs and also made a couple of good plays with his arm. What more do you want to see from him in this second half? You know, you want to see consistency. You want to see him throwing the ball downfield because uh, during this last drive, we've seen him uh, not only running with his feet, but he was pushing the ball downfield, shooting the ball towards those receivers. And when he was doing that, he was getting good catches, good yardage out of that. And if they do that in the second half, I believe, uh, they'll find some success and be able to put more points on the board. Russell's trailing this one 14 to 10. Halftime here at Falcon Stadium. We'll step aside. Coming up on the other side of the break, you'll hear my halftime interview with head coach Nick Mitchell of the Golden West Rustlers. You're watching Golden West Rustler football right here on SportsNetUSA.net. SportsNetUSA.net. Rashawn Haylock joined by Rustlers head coach Nick Mitchell. Coach, game number four here. An exciting team that you have. Tell some of the fans at home how much you like this team. Well, they're, we've got good kids. First of all, I hate to say kids. Good young men, you know, which you never know at our level. You know, you get some challenging squirrels every now and again or, you know, more than your share. You know, because they just come from different backgrounds, different places different experiences, we try to bring them together and do things our way. And they're used to doing things their way, most of these guys. So, you know, it's always a challenge, just team building and getting them going in the right direction and all working together as one unit. But, you know, it helps when you have good kids that are along that same idea where they're like, hey, you know, we understand what coach is trying to say, we understand what coach is trying to do, and we're going to do our best to go out there and do it. <laughs> when you talk about some of those kids <laughs> it's all good you talk about some of those kids uh joe Pyle is one of them uh it's a walk on at nevada he comes here he's number four on the jet chart but don't know that he thought or you guys thought that he would be in that this situation how do you think he's handled this well the thing with joe is that we really like joe's film and when he when we were contacted by him and you know the thing with joe is that he's not he with us he has not been the you know the best monday through friday quarterback as far as the practice time that we've wanted and so the other three guys were playing just at a little higher level than joe was as far as monday through fridays and doing what coach ship wanted them to do but joe got his opportunity in the game and we've had guys like that. Chris Dietchemont, who was the state player of the year, offensive player of the year. You, you almost hated Chris Monday through Friday because he wouldn't do what you wanted him to do. Um, just kind of made his own reads, his own calls, and wasn't really staying in the scope of the offense, what we wanted to do. But on Saturdays, Chris was lights out. 
Joe's got a little bit of that in him where, you know, you may not be the happiest with him or most confident with some of the decisions that he makes Monday through Friday, but on Saturdays he comes out and he makes plays. And he's led us to essentially three victories, debatably. Um, we expect for him to do the same thing here tonight. You know, he's gotten a little bit better in practice. Um, but it's Saturday. We know that that kid's going to come out here and he's going to give it at all and he's going to make plays and, you know, he'll be able to, you know, take that offense on his back. Um, you know, it's been a little while since he played quarterback because he didn't play for the two years. You know, he didn't get any time those two seasons at Nevada. So really it's three seasons ago that he actually has even played in a game. So, you know, practice-wise and all that stuff, just getting back into, you know, under the lights on a Saturday. You know, it's still coming around for him, and he's been steadily improving since he has taken that role as the starter. That's an interesting point that you bring up, Coach Mitchell, here with us at the half on SportsNetUSA.net. With that much time off, what is the most difficult thing or maybe the last thing to come for a guy in a situation like that when he hasn't played the position in so long? You know, I think it... You know, it's just a lot. I'm not a quarterback. I, I would say the person, you know, we haven't had this situation much, uh, but I would think the live bullets coming at you. You know, you get used to playing every Friday night, you know, and being the guy. I mean, you get used to the game time atmosphere, the physicality of getting hit, taking hits, directing, and all of that that you're doing with the offense. You know, I think you kind of, some people, you know, you innately have that or else you kind of got to learn it again and get back out there and get going. Um, I think with him, you know, maybe it's a little bit of that, you know, just kind of getting back into the deal a little bit. But, you know, I mean, he's, he, he settles down on Saturdays. So that's where I think it comes back, where he understands where he's at. He kind of comes into his own right there, and he can just let himself, you know, maybe it's a, you know, doesn't have to stress about things anymore. He can just go out there and play football. Halftime here on SportsNetUSA.net. Nick Mitchell, wrestler's head coach, joining us here. It's not often that I ask you about a punter. I don't remember ever asking you about a punter other than who is the guy going to be. But James Baldwin III is a guy that stole over 50 bases in the minor leagues one season. He is dynamic. How much fun has it been to coach a guy like him who can make a boomy punt one play and then stay in there on defense and cause some havoc at defensive end the next play? Yeah, you know, he's, he's learning. You know, talk about been out a little while. James been out for over six years, I think, maybe seven years since he's last played in a football game. So, you know, I mean, it's taken him some time. When he first got back in there, I mean, the guy's been playing baseball, standing in center field forever. Even just to get his football legs back under him, it took him a while to get those. I mean, just a whole different sort of game. And as he's continued to get more comfortable out there, you know, we moved him around positions a little bit. He was a receiver in high school. We started out there, and then we kind of slid him over into the DBs, and now we're at a point where both he and ourselves think is the right fit for him at the defensive end. We use his size, his length, his athleticism to be able to get out there and wreak some havoc. He's arguably, if not the one of the top two fastest kids that we have on our team. Um, he's going to make plays. Now, it's just kind of getting used to being a defensive lineman now, which he's never done before. You know, and just the little intricacies and the techniques and everything that go along with that. But you take that athlete and you put him back there. I mean, he's got a, a, an unbelievable leg on him. But you put him back there in those situations where he can also make some things happen. I mean, it's kind of like Joe, you know. Joe's got, Joe Powell's got good legs on him. So he can make some things happen at the quarterback spot that most like, you know, a pocket passer wouldn't be able to make. Well, JB can do that same thing at the punt. I mean, one of the fastest guys on the field, if he decides to take off and go, once he gets going, few people are going to catch him, which is also why, you know, we've been trying to get him uh, on the kickoff return. You know, he's only had one so far, but the one he had was excellent. I mean, he hit that thing so hard and fast right up the middle. I mean, and he's going to be tough to bring down as well. Has some issues with securing the ball. we got to make sure that he knows how to squeeze that thing. I think he's used to squeezing leather out of a glove. Now, you know, it kind of it's, it's, it's reteaching him how to play football and whatnot. But once we get all those little things taken care of, he's you know should be a dynamic returner, get some consistencies down on the punting. He should lead everything in punting. And, you know, with the defensive end, once he kind of figures out what he's doing and what we want him to do down there, he'll be very good. There's, to circle back, talking about this team, in, in terms of numbers, the largest squad that you've had, perhaps since you've been here, uh, conversely, talking to head coach Frank Mazzotto Cerritos earlier today, he said this was probably the smallest uh, team in numbers he's had. Um, how do how how those things kind of play themselves out, and how much do you think that just the success that you guys have had have led to you know, more and more people showing up on Huntington Beach campus? Yeah, 
you know, to be honest, from year in to year out, we really don't know how many we're going to have. You know, we always start around 100-ish. But then, you know, it depends on how many, you know, really quality college football type players that we have. You know, that's the big difference right there, where in years past, maybe we haven't had as many quality type guys. And so the normal attrition, you know, it kind of cuts itself down. And, you know, we finish in the 60s or somewhere around there. We're hanging pretty tough this year, you know, as far as numbers. Really haven't dropped down much. And the guys that we have, we've been able to gray shirt some excellent football. Some what we think are going to be very good football players here in the future. I mean, a number of young men that we have the depth on the team. So we do have that luxury that we can redshirt them or gray shirt them. And really, numbers wise, you know, we started off maybe a little bit, you know, like you said, maybe a little bit higher than we've ever had. But really, the quality of kids that we've had, you know, it has been something that's been really great for us to see the gray shirts, you know, have that year of development with our strength coach, Coach Steele. I mean, that's going to be huge for us in the future. Anytime you can really gray shirt young men, you know, and take that extra year, most of the time they're not ready. As soon as they come out of high school, we just have to make them ready in a very short period of time. It's a, it's a, it's huge for a program to be able to do that. And so it's great. I mean, we try to do it every year and try to have those quality guys that, you know, hopefully we can gray shirt and continue to develop. Um, this year it just kind of worked out. It's been the best one so far. Coach Mitchell joining us here at the half. Last thing for you, Coach, before I let you go. Uh, you're kind of getting up there in tenure. This is year number 12 for you. Um, opposite you tonight, Frank Mazzotta, maybe one of the longest tenured coaches in Southern California's JC football. What's it like to look across that sideline and see a guy who's done it for so long? And considering, you look at yourself, you got over a decade, you know, under your boat as well. Well, I'm envious that somebody could even last that long with the stress <laughs> that this job puts on you. The fact that he's been at it for, what, 30-some-odd years? I mean, I've done 10 and it feels like 30-some-odd <laughs> years already. I can't imagine tripling up on that. Uh, but, you know, I, you know, success helps. Winning games helps. You know, when we've been successful, you know, it's easy to carry that on. They've had a tremendous amount of success through the years here at Cerritos. Uh, we've got a great recruiting area, excellent stadium facilities here. Um, so you come here and you see all of that, and you can see why somebody would be here for so long and all. And, you know, it's a tribute to our profession, too, that, you know, you have coaches that have been around this, you know, and in Orange County, it's kind of been that way, you know, for the most part. A lot of guys have been at their schools a long time. Um, and even throughout Southern California, some of those top programs, these guys don't really go anywhere. Um, but, you know, you're not going to be able to find these guys too much. And so, you know, you take advantage of it, you know, while we're here. And, you know, who knows, because this is our the end of our two and two. So we may not play Cerritos for many years again. So Coach Mazzotta and I, we might not even cross paths. So I'll make sure, you know, talk to him pregame, you know, and tell him, you know, how happy I am that, you know, we're playing each other and this and that and all that good stuff. Um, but ultimately, it's great that he's here, but we just want to win the ball game. Special thanks to Nick Mitchell for joining us at the half. Halftime here at Falcon Stadium. Cerritos on top of Golden West, 14-10. to 10. Let's go over some other scores throughout the SCFA today. Fullerton, a 49-23 win over Mount Sac. Santa Ana falling to Hancock, 50-35. to 35. Santa Barbara beating up Compton, 48-16. to 16. L.A. Valley with a 14-point lead over Glendale. That one in progress. Uh, San Diego Mesa on top of ELAC, 13 to nothing in the third quarter. Also on the third, Southwestern on top of Pasadena City, 27 to 23. OCC with a 27 to 7 lead over Santa Monica at the half. And in the third quarter, RCC 28, Ventura 20. It's the homecoming for the Tigers. We'll step aside. We'll break down. First half stats and get you ready for the second half. Charles will be back to join me as well as you're listening to Golden West Russell Football right here on SportsNetUSA.net. Welcome back to Falcon Stadium on the campus of Cerritos College. Halftime here. Golden West trailing Cerritos 14-10. to 10. Rashawn Haylock, Charles Williams here with you. Total yards, Golden West with a slight advantage, 167 to 155. They're winning the turnover battle as well. Uh, Cerritos with two turnovers, Golden West with just one. All of them 
have been fumbles. But look at the conversions. Golden West is 2 of 9 on third down. Cerritos 2 of 5. Neither team has converted on fourth down. But both teams are perfect on their red zone chances. Uh, Joe Pyle, the leading rusher, 9 carries, 57 yards. Sheldon White with a big first half. He had four catches for 28 yards. Pyle in the passing game, 12 of 15, 104 yards, and a touchdown. But he's been sacked twice. So looking at some of these numbers, Charles, what are some things that stick out to you? Uh, well, the thing that sticks out the most, uh, one of those fourth down conversions, uh, it seems like uh, neither team really should be going for it on first, fourth down. Uh, and uh, they both are doing great in the red zone. Uh, those are That's a positive thing for both teams, uh, that they're both able to get the ball into the end zone or score uh, uh, in the red zone. Uh, the only other issue that these teams have are the fumbles, uh, with Cerritos having two of them and uh, Golden West still having one. Not a very smart play there to start the half for the Rustlers. James Baldwin receiving the opening kickoff, and it took him right out of bounds. He just lets that thing go. Rustlers are starting at their own 35-yard line. Instead, it'd be first down and 10 from their own six. Ouch. Yeah, that's painful right there. You, you can't make mistakes like that. And when you do, uh, it's costly. And now you got uh, 94 yards to go to try to score a touchdown. And you're just starting off in a very bad position. Pile out of the pistol. High snap. It's in the end zone. Pile. Tries to fall on top of it. He does, and it's a safety. Wow. Same thing that happened to him earlier. Ball hits him right in the hands. Hits him in the hands. He fumbles it. And you can't fumble the ball in your own end zone. Uh, that's just costly. You're going to lose points there, and they lost points. They give up the ball and give up two points uh, just because – he couldn't catch the ball in his hands. Unreal. I mean, that thing came out. It was kind of hot when it came out to him, but still, I agree. That's that's something that he should have had. It hit him right in the hands and falls into the end zone. Powell, no choice but to just fall on top of it there that time. And it's going to be a safety. So the Rustlers will give Cerritos two points. Score is now 16 to 10, and Golden West will have to kick the ball back to Cerritos as a result of that safety. You, you kind of wonder maybe they'd like to put him under center instead of having him out there in the pistol because you can't have the drops like this, uh, especially on, on your side of the field. And when you're on your side of the field and you're giving the ball up like that or giving points up like that, uh, it's just too costly, especially for a game like this, uh, which is close. So the Rustlers will be kicking it off from their own 20-yard line. Ra Ra Ashford and Kirali Hall deep to receive. Backpedaling is Hall, taking it at his own 18. Hall up the far side, up ended wow. at the 40, a somersault to the 44-yard line. Two points, the two points of letting the ball go out of bounds, and then also. Uh, dropping the ball in the end zone and having to fall on it. Uh, those two plays cost them points, which could cost them the game. Personal foul against Golden West, 15 wow. yard penalty. Wow, so you add 15 to that. Is there's going to be a personal foul against the Rustlers? So, even better field position to start here for Cerritos. As Quentin Davis, the Cerritos quarterback, will line his offense up at the 43-yard line of the Rustlers. First down and 10. Davis with a touchdown pass earlier in this game. Toss sweep to the near side and nowhere to go there for Brown. A flag comes in, but nice pursuit there by Vimaona. Yeah, it looks like this flag is going to cost Cerritos and maybe push them back a little bit, and it does. 
Joy Maduena in on the stop as well. So just want to go against the Falcons that are moving back into their own territory. So it'll be a first down from their own 48-yard line. So first, first and 20. Davis loses the snap. It looks like the Rustlers may have recovered. And they have. Avery Jones slid into there like a runner trying to slide in the home head first. And he recovered the fumble with the quickness. Cat-like moves there <laughs> from the wrestler Mike Linebacker. And just like that, they're able to turn Cerritos right back over and have an opportunity inside Cerritos' territory. Now first down and 10 at the 48. This, this is crazy. Both of these teams are having problems holding on to the ball. Uh, and he was under center and lost the ball. And this is giving Golden West another opportunity uh, to get a score out of this and so even take the lead. Pyle back shoulder to Mouton, a nice diving catch behind him. Pickup of nine brings up a second and one. And that's a good thing here for Pyle. They're using him, using the receivers to push the ball down uh, against the Ritos to Getting better field position, not trying to run the ball, but trying to throw the ball downfield. And it's been working for them quite well. It's in the H-back, Kahuna Nui in motion. The handoff goes to Devai. He tries to bounce it to the outside, but he's going to be hitting the backfield. He loses a couple there. It's a nice play made there by the safety, Alex Fulmer. I don't know. If I was Golden West right now, I'd keep throwing the ball and throw it until they stop it. And it doesn't seem like uh, Cerritos has really been able to stop the pass, especially when it's going downfield. You feel like with as much man-to-man -man coverage has been played today from Cerritos, Golden West may have been able to take advantage of some of that. So far, not the case. Pyle throws it in the flat. Dees turns it upfield. And he's close to the sticks. It's going to depend on the spot from the officials here. He's down right at the sticks at the 37-yard line. And it looks and like it's close to a first down. They're going to give it to him. They don't even call the sticks out for the chains, pardon me, for a measurement. They give it to him, so it's going to be a first down. So first and 10 for the Rustlers. Three wide for Pyle. Tavai, one more time, tries to stiff arm. He gets just a couple once again, so not much room at all for Tavai. I mean, he's churning and churning, and that offensive line having their hands full with this D-line of Cerritos. But we talked about it earlier. Tavai is one of those guys, you just, just got to keep feeding him. Keep feeding him, keep feeding him, because as the game goes along, he gets stronger and stronger and stronger. We saw it last week against Chafee. The wrestlers and John Ship, the offensive coordinator, hoping that that could be the case again today. Now you hope it's the case, uh, but they still need to take those shots down the field. Cerritos hasn't been able to stop them at all. Some movement up front. Looks like this one going to go against the wrestlers. And that was the right tackle, Leshawn Askew, the guilty party. If we're calling your name as an offensive lineman, nine times out of ten is probably not a good thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's ten times out of ten if they're calling your name, especially before the ball is snapped. And that's, a, that's a terrible thing. You don't want to get caught doing that because you're costing your team at least five yards on that. Second and 14, pile. Pressure coming, throws it far side, pass caught over there. And balls out once again, another fumble. The referee's going to have to sort through this pile. Now I was looking at that. It seemed like he was down. Yeah, they say he's down. They say Rustler football. 
And that's fortunate if they say he's down uh, on that catch. That's Xavier Smith making the catch. And over there on the coverage for Cerritos, Scrappy Norman. And that's that old defensive adage. One guy hold him up, the other guy come over and try to rip the ball out. They certainly did that there as Smith was trying to fight for some extra yards. Under 11 to play here in this third quarter. 16 to 10, Cerritos with the lead here. Pyle on a seam incomplete. Uh -oh. Scrappy and Norman there, letting everybody know 13 made the play as he was locked up against Deese there one-on-one. -on -one. And that ball thrown a little bit behind Deese. Yes, it was thrown behind him. If he would have let him out just a little bit more, uh, that would have been looking like six points right there and would have had a tie game uh, with the Rustlers being able to go up one with an extra point. Uh, but it was uh, thrown behind him. Pyle couldn't get it to him. Uh, even though he had a step on his man. You like the matchup. Scrappy Norman, one of the better cornerbacks in the SCFA. Bounced back from Arizona State University. Played his high school ball at Sarah for his final year. Prior to that, he was at Culver City High School. A supreme athlete. Comes over Cerritos from Chafee, but Dees a three-inch advantage there. You like the matchup there. Unable to connect that time. Pyle on fourth and seven. Going to use his feet. Pyle tripped up. Oh, tripped up by Derek Thomas. He got him right at the shoelaces. He might have got a pinky on him, but it was just enough. And Thomas with his, an his hands in the air as if to say, well, every little bit counts, huh? Every little bit counts. And in these situations... I mean, even if you punt the ball, it's not the worst thing. If you punt it and it goes in the end zone, uh, you're not giving up anything. And actually, you're taking 10 yards away from them. Uh, and sometimes in these situations, it would be better for the coaches just to kick it out and make them start from the 20 instead of starting uh, from the 30-yard line. So Davis back in there under center. Last time out, he fumbled it. Rustlers recovered it. This time, he holds on to the snap, hands it off to Hall, and Hall drilled at the 34-yard line. That was a nice, solid tackle there. It's Damon Roberts again on the stop. Talk to any member of this coaching staff. They'll tell you night and day, Damon Roberts, from the person who first stepped on campus to the person today. Had some maturity issues when he first got on campus, but now turned into quite a leader for this team. This bounced back exceptionally well from that knee injury a season ago. Davis rolling out, throwing near side, sandwiched, and holding on to the ball. Wow, what a catch that there was an incredible is Garrett. Incredible. I mean, he was right there. The ball hit him in the hands. He got smashed front and back. Both sides, right? Both sides held on to the ball, uh, and that's what you want these guys to do. When you're getting hit, you need to be able to hold on to that ball, and he did, and they got him a first down. Nine and a half left in this third quarter. Hall gets the carry. Stutter step at the line of scrimmage, and look at that second effort. Gets him to the second level for a nine-yard pickup. And brings up a second and one for Cerritos. The, the little burst in a confined space by Corrali Hall there that time. Turn which should have been a one-yard run into nine. I mean, that little burst, that little burst with a little cut that he had, a little fake he gave, got him an extra eight yards out of that and got him uh, to an, uh, a possible another first down here for Cerritos. Three wide. And they give it to Brown this time as they try that left side of the line of scrimmage. And a nice pickup, picks up the first down and more up to the Golden West 44-yard line. And it looks like Cerritos is doing to uh, Golden West what Golden West wants to do to Cerritos. They've been trying to force the ball down Ground their throat. Ground and pound, right? Yeah, and here they are just pushing the ball down the Golden West throat uh, on the ground. And look at how many guys they got on that offensive line. Just two wide receivers. They give it to Stevenson that time. 
he picks up five and another favorable second down situation for Cerritos. Well, you got an opportunity there, just two wide receivers. You, you stack up that line of scrimmage you know, with offensive linemen and tight ends and I mean, you kind of give it see to that your coming. back and say, just run, baby. Run, you give it to them, and, and Golden West should be prepared. You see that happening. Uh, less likely he's going to throw the ball. Not saying that he won't, but it's less likely that he would. Bouncing to the outside is Stevenson now. A first down and a couple more for the talented tailback for the Falcons. The freshman out of Nevada. Gives the Falcons another first down at the 32-yard line of the Rustlers. And they just keep coming at you in droves with these backs. Stevenson, Hall, Brown, Ashford. We've seen them all tonight. And they all do just a little bit something different. But they've been a handful. This time, Davis will go out of the gun. Pressure coming. Davis throws it up, has Garrett, and he overshot him. It's one on one there with Markel Johnson. I don't think Garrett ever saw that ball in the lights. Didn't track it very well. Davis was hit as he threw it as Roberts came with the pressure from the backside. And that's uh, Cerritos College taking that shot down the field. Uh, they've been hitting them, you know, uh, on the ground game over and over you again. Pound, you pound, you pound, you know, try pounding. to come over the top with it, right? Exactly. And, and now here they are. They, they took a shot with it, letting them know, hey, we can still score going over the top. And they were on a one-on-one -on -one situation there. Two, almost got burned again. Two backs now for Davis. Low snap. They give it to Hall. Hall cuts. Hall with space. Ten-yard line. Five. Touchdown, Cerritos. Wow, that sweep with just a little cut right back on the inside. Had the Golden West defense caught off guard. They couldn't cover back on that side, back towards the middle again because they overplayed. And when they overplayed, they got burned when he cut right back into the middle. And it was nothing but wide open field for him. Cerritos with a 12-point advantage now in their largest lead of the game in the Point after to come from Beto Avila. Kick is up and through. So with 648 left here in the third, Cerritos 23, Golden West 10. As you're watching Golden West football right here on SportsNetUSA.net. Rashawn Haylock alongside Charles Williams, Ed Ford, providing all the fantastic visuals for you here on this nice, cool Saturday evening in Cerritos. But an interesting third quarter has seen both teams turn the ball over. But it's been Cerritos who's been able to capitalize off of those turnovers. And once again, they turn it into seven. As they lead this one 23 to 10, Corrali Hall with a touchdown run to put this Cerritos team up by double digits now. Second time tonight they've been up by double digits, but this 13-point lead is the largest of the night for the Falcons and as they is, put it on the tee. This is nine points for Cerritos just off of turnovers. Uh, and Golden West... They can't play like that. They keep giving the ball up. So ball went on the return, but it looks like this one's going to come back. Penalty flag. Looks like the penalty is going to be against Devon Anderson. And that's been a point of emphasis. Even if it's not a clipping, if it's not a, black in, a, a block in the back, point of emphasis Oh, they're going to call it a block in the back. It, it didn't appear to be one, but even if it's not one, a point of emphasis for these officials, and this has kind of been statewide on, on multiple uh, levels, is defenseless uh, opposition. So that was a situation right there where, you know, it was deemed that, that the player was somewhat in a, in a defenseless spot. And 
Got right. leveled there that time by Anderson. The flag's going to come out. They've been instructed, these officials have been instructed to call the pit, throw up the flag every single time that happens. And that's understandable. Uh, you understand they have a safety level of the game for this. Tavon Valdez with the burst. Pile. Nice clean pocket. Going to roll out of it, however. Looking far side. And that pass is going to be caught over there. Eight-yard pickup for the Rusters, and that's Mouton hauling it in. And that's what we've been saying. They need to push that ball down the field, push it with the quarterback throwing the ball downfield to their wide receivers. Uh, and they need to use the, the running back who has more speed out there on the field. Uh, let him hit that hole. Let him do it with speed and quickness. And if he's able to do that, just like he did before, uh, he'll be able to pick up more yards. Scrappy Norman being attended to on the far sideline. Number 13 in blue, right in front of the Golden West bench. And he's going to be helped up off the field. Looks like he's going to be able to run off underneath his own power. Folks, don't forget, Golden West Russell Football on SportsNetUSA.net is brought to you in part by Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Go to their website for today's deals on used cars, including Toyota certified pre-owned vehicles. On the web at MillerToyotaVanaheim.com, located at the 91 and Euclid, Miller Toyota of Anaheim supports high school sports, communities, college sports, and education. 5.45 to play here in this third. Pyle hands it off to Valdez. Another penalty flag comes in as Valdez momentarily has a first down for the Rusters. But let's see if this one is going to stand. I tell you, the other killer besides turning the ball over are penalties. And when you make useless, dumb penalties, you're just going to kill your team. And both of these teams have been making some very, as you would say, boneheaded decisions, uh, offensively and defensively, costing their team a lot of yardage and giving up that yardage to the other team. And here Cerritos did the very same thing with Golden West. Yeah, that's why I'm going to go against Cerritos. So... Moves the Rustlers into Falcon territory. First down and 10 from the Falcon 43-yard line. Pyle will hand it off to Vi. Bounces to the outside. Rhino to Vi with space. To Vi at the numbers at the 30. Taken down at the 28-yard line. But will it stand as another penalty flag comes in? Hold it. Too good to be true for the Rustlers. Holding, says Dwayne Finley. And that'll move the Rustlers back into their own territory. So it was a short-lived stint on to the other side of the 50 for Golden West. So a first down now and 20 from the Rustler 47-yard line. I mean, these penalties can be demoralizing to a team, especially when they keep reoccurring and having you keep losing yards. And when you're losing that yardage, it just makes it harder for you to make it up and try to get a score out of it. There were only eight penalties in the first half. We've seen our fair share here in this third quarter. Pyle, long throw to this near side, caught by White as he gets strung out the 49-yard line. So a pickup of about six there for White, but that throw, <laughs> it's about an 18-yard throw as he threw it from the far side of the field. I mean, it was a, it was a lot of distance under that. And because of that distance, you know, you're not going to get as much yardage out of it uh, oftentimes as you would like. Trips to the right for Pyle. Tries to buy some time, throwing on the run and nearly picked off. What a play there yeah. by the Rustlers. And that was Moot, I know, Derek Dees, pardon me. Dees coming there. And playing defensive back, essentially, having to bat that one away from Cerritos. Otherwise, that was going to be picked off. Kind of an ill-advised pass there from Pyle. I mean, that's the moment when you realize when you're the quarterback, you're running out, you got somebody on your tail, and your, your wide receiver is covered, throw the ball away. There's no point in holding on to it or throwing it into a crowd because it could have turned into another turnover and more points. So third and 15 for the Rusters. Pyle steps up. Pyle trying to tuck and run. 
And not going to get anywhere near that first down marker. Down at the 44-yard line, a pickup of five. And it's going to bring up a fourth down and ten. And in comes James Baldwin. So maybe, just maybe, Rustlers could try to flip the field position here. It's kind of been against them in this second half. Perhaps this could be somewhat of a spark for them if Baldwin is able to pin Cerritos deep here. Oh, yeah, if he can do that and, and put them further back, uh, their defense can kind of step up and hopefully help them out. Denson calls for a fair catch, but has it go over his head into the end zone for a touchback. So Cerritos will have it first and 10 from their own 20. Rashawn Haylock here alongside Charles Williams. Our SportsNetUSA.net crew want to say a special hello to Mrs. Mitch. Coach Mitchell's mom listening and watching us up north. We'll say hello to her and thank her so much for her continued support and always being so nice to us. Appreciate you, Miss Mitch. Look forward to seeing you when you come down here later this season. 3.25 to play here in this third quarter. Now, this is where Golden West is going to have to buckle down and stop Cerritos. Because uh, if they score again, uh, the game is would seem like it would just be out of hand and out of control for them. Uh, and you're looking at a lead that really hard for them to come back from because they've had a hard time with the Cerritos defense. They try a, a, that RPO, a fake the handoff and a, fake the option and a quick pass to the outside, Davis, that time. But the rushers all over it. Oregon made that play famous. Marcus Mariota ended up making a lot of money as a result of being able to execute plays like that. And he has some talented receivers to the outside. Become a little bit more common now in college and high school football. No gain there. Second down and 10. Davis. They go to the ground one more time. And Rustlers are there one more time. Ra Ra Ashford nowhere to go. It's a nice pursuit there by the Rustler defensive line. Silas Collins there on the stop. Also coming in there to make the stop. Helaman Sakapulu. As we approach two to play here in this third quarter. Third down and nine. I mean, the wrestlers have a pretty much a solid defense if you look at them. Uh, but when you have a lot of turnovers, uh, no defense is going to be able to overcome that. So timeout taken by Cerritos. The longtime offensive coordinator, Dean Grossfield, going to huddle up his offense on this near sideline for the Falcons. Third. Third down and nine. Don't forget, Golden West Rustler Football on SportsNetUSA.net is brought to you in part by Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Go to their website for today's deals on used cars, including the Toyota certified pre-owned vehicles. On the web at MillerToyotaofAnaheim.com, located at the 91 and Euclid, Miller Toyota of Anaheim supports high school sports, community college sports, and education. Rashawn Haylock here alongside Charles Williams. Said hello to Mrs. Mitch. I'm sure you probably want to say hello to your wife, Chelsea. She's back home watching. Oh, yeah. I say hello to Chelsea, my wife, and the family. Uh, I know they're listening and watching right now. So, hey. <laughs> hey. 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 <laughs> 203 to play. I guess I got to say hello to Crystal, too. Otherwise, I'm going to hear it. Hello, better. Crystal. <laughs> How are you? Davis in the flat. Ashford juggles, makes the catch. But he swung out of bounds. Heavy pursuit there by the Rustlers. And they come up with a stop. So they get the much-needed stop. And we talked about maybe being able to flip the field position here. So here's an opportunity to perhaps to do so. And they're able to flip it. I mean, now they, they stopped them over here on a three and out. They're still over on the 19-yard line over here, punting it away, which should give Golden West favorable field position. Uh, regardless of what the punt is. It's a hi high snap, a short kick. Johnson going to call for a fair catch. And that's something that's been missing also tonight. Number nine, just not able really to get his hands on the ball in a situation where he can make an impact. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he, he's a threat in the, in the special teams game. 
I mean, if, if he's able to get open and get out uh, just some running room, you'll be able to watch him fly down the field. Uh, but uh, there haven't been a lot of punts in this game. And so it really don't get a lot of opportunities for that. Yes, it's somewhat half the battle, right? <laughs> <laughs> That, that would help. Don't forget, fans, AUHSD football. That's Anaheim Union High School District Football returns to SportsNetUSA.net. Friday, 7 p.m., Laura taking on Bessette. 7 p.m. right here on SportsNetUSA.net. That's an audio-only game for you. Make sure to check out some exciting high school football. Here's Pyle on first and 10. Hands it off. Valdez. Valdez, a little juke. In a confined space, picks up five there, brings up a second down and five as we approach five to play. And, and uh, Golden West had a penalty right off that kickoff and lost uh, 10 yards off of that. Uh, now they have to make up 10 yards from where they were. Uh, like I said, those, those penalties are costly. And now you have to make up the same ground that you've already had. Pile. And Pyle strung out there, and a nice play made by the cornerback, Josh Caldwell, there that time. And Caldwell appears to be shaken up. He's a little slow to get up. So we'll have an injury timeout on the field as Caldwell sits right in front of the Cerrito sideline. And he had to hop off the field, but they're looking at that right leg. It seems like the thing for Golden West, it seems like they've been playing from bad field position almost the whole game. Uh, they get themselves in a hole. Uh, now you see them here at third and 11. Uh, and it's when you're always trying to make up third down with a lot of yards, oftentimes you're going to find yourself uh, unsuccessful. But hopefully they'll find themselves successful in this, this possession. Third and 11 for Pyle. Steps up, throws downfield and caught oh what a fantastic catch downfield oh no they call it incomplete now they call it incomplete sheldon white almost made an incredible grab there looked like he had it i mean that pass was thrown short it looked like it was going to be an interception but he came over the top and was able to take the ball and it looked like it was a, a good reception there for a minute, but the referee said it was no good. That was an incredible play. Incredible play, but unfortunately it didn't work out for Golden West. 11 seconds left in this third quarter. A low snap dribbles to Baldwin, and now he's going to try to run with this. Baldwin picks up a block. Baldwin still going. Close to the first down marker. He stretches for it. Let's see. Rustler Bench is excited. They turned that into a first down conversion there. That's incredible. I mean, but, you know, from the mistakes that are in the game, you know, sometimes you have to try to turn those into positives. He turned it into a positive, uh, but it wasn't positive enough for him. And it ended up being short uh, a couple yards on that one, actually. And nice job by Ed Fort to give you that look there. Ball's right there at the 40. You see the sticks at the 42. So it actually is about two yards shy. It looked a lot closer during live action, but that's quite a distance there for Baldwin. So that takes us to the end of the third quarter. So after three, Cerritos 23, Golden West 10. As you're watching Golden West Wrestler Football right here on SportsNetUSA.net. Rashawn Haylock alongside Charles Williams. Ed Ford providing the visuals for you here tonight. And wrestlers have 15 minutes to try to make something happen here in a game that, in all honesty, just has not been played uh, very well by them. A lot of mistakes. We talked about it last week with all the turnovers that they made, how they weren't going to be able to, to have a similar performance here this week against Cerritos or to come back to haunt them. Well, it's been somewhat similar. Davis looking downfield off the fingertips of the intended wide receiver there, Chuck Wumizi. And for the second year in a row, number two nearly burnt this rustler secondary. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, that ball hit him right in the hands. You thought it was going to be six right there. But uh, these guys seem to have a problem holding on to the ball both sides uh, at the most critical time uh, when the, the game could be put out of reach or uh, brought closer. Three watt. Davis hands it off. Brown. Brown up the gut. Brown a spin move off of defenders at the 20, at the 10. Five dies for the pylon. But he is going to be shy. They but you can't give up that kind of yard, especially here in the fourth quarter. Can't give them plays like that and, and expect to win the game. So they go with the jumbo set. Stevenson, the fullback. Brown, the D-back. Davis under center. They hand it off. Brown and Damon Roberts grabbed him at the waist and stopped him from getting inside the painted area there. Brings up a second and goal. That was good defense there by, by Golden West. Uh, the make up for giving up all that yard, stop them right there. And yet they found themselves once again with another penalty. Offsides. Oh, wow. I think that one might have been against Roberts because he was just asking the line judge for an explanation there. So half the distance, first and goal one more time. Same formation for the Falcons. Davis to the short man. Stevenson up and over the pile and into the end zone. Touchdown. Falcons have opened this one up here. 29 to 10. Fourth quarter action. And the offense going to stay out there and go for two. Three wide. Chuck Wimese in motion. Davis rolls, throws. Chuck Wimese is going to be hit right as he caught it. And the conversion is failed. So nice job by the Russells there, not hanging their hats and coming up with that stop there on the two-point conversion. I mean, you, under, you see that they want to go up by three, three touchdowns, but uh, getting the one uh, probably would have been more feasible at this point. So as it stands, it's a 19-point lead for Cerritos. 29-10 our score here. In Falcon Stadium, high above the western sidelines, Rashawn Haylock alongside Charles Williams. I want to say hello to my broadcast partner, Andrew King, out on assignment tonight, but watching from home. A little bit of nostalgia for us. Andrew and I go back. This is actually where we started, right here at Falcon Stadium, calling Cerritos games before moving over to Golden West. And it really has been. A tremendous move for us. The move to Golden West has been one of the best moves of my career. I don't want to speak for Andrew, but it's been phenomenal. Coach Mitchell and company have treated us great in our tenure as Markel Johnson returns this one back to the 22-yard line. Had a time, had a chance to talk to Coach Frank Mazzotta earlier today about some of those old teams, some of those old players that he had walking through here. Michael Willie, one of them, left from here, went to Arizona State, had a cup of coffee with the San Diego Chargers. He's one of those players Mazzotta talked about who, you know, is back around the program, continues to come by, poke his face in, say hello, you know, work out with the guys from time to time. Willie's still trying to uh, see if he can get another crack at professional football. But tell you what, he was a phenomenal player during his time here. Wearing the Falcons blue and white. Here's a pass to the near side caught by Xavier Smith. And it looks like we have a new quarterback for the Rustlers. So having missed action the last couple of weeks, John Buxa back from that shoulder injury. He practiced this week. We weren't sure if we we're going to see him 
uh, in tonight's game at all, but you look at the scoreboard and they decide to go to the bullpen. Here's Buxa, runs with it, puts it on the turf, recovered by Cerritos. It looked like the ball went out of bounds. Is that Cerritos? I don't know. They say, yeah. they say it went out of bounds. Yeah, out of bounds. Dwayne Finley <laughs> came in there and said that it was out of bounds. I mean, it's almost like uh, the rustlers are trying to give this game away. Uh, but if you, if you want to uh, come back, you got to buckle down and, and play some real football out here. Uh, and got to hold on to the ball at all costs. Uh, but these guys have been letting the ball slip through their fingers uh, at every opportunity and, and, and at times, in opportune times. And it's been costing them. They tried to ground game with Rhino Tavai and nothing doing there. Omar Garcia leading the charge of dark blue unis to take down the talented Rustler tailback. Just has not found the running lanes here tonight against this stout defensive line of the Falcons. Four wide. Buxa in there at quarterback. Stops looking downfield. Ratzleff off the back of the helmet of the defensive back, Robert Corner. And he had him. He was wide open. If he would have gave him just a little bit more out of that. Left that it a little there, bit short, huh? It was a little bit short. He needed just a little bit more, make it a little bit longer. And if he would have made it longer, you would have been talking about six points going up on the board right now. Buxa, you hate to get into the, the, the comparisons, but looks to be a little bit more of a, a fluid passer than Joe Pyle. He, he seems to be more fluid than him, uh, but Pyle seems to have... Uh, Buxa looking deep again and incomplete. Uh, Smith was trying to run under it, but that one thrown more to the sideline. and It's going to bring up a fourth down here. Offense going to stay on the field. All uh, right. I mean, he needs to be a little more accurate with those passes, be able to get them to his wide receivers. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I understand they, they made that chance, that, that change, and, and it seemed like the coach changed his mind. He's going to bring out the uh, special team to go out here and punt the ball and see if they can put Cerritos in a bad situation uh, field-wise and hopefully get the ball back so they can get a couple more scores out of this. So Denson will stand at his own 30, Baldwin. Fair catch call for and made at the 32-yard line. Don't forget, next Saturday, Fullerton College football returns to sportsnetusa.net. As the Hornets travel to Moore Park, 6 p.m. kickoff. And we'll have that for you right here on sportsnetusa.net. In addition to these rustlers returning home to take on Long Beach, That'll be a 1 p.m. kickoff. We'll have that one for you. Sportsnetusa.net. Andrew King, longtime broadcast partner, should be back in the fold for that one as we return to Golden West Field. Against, no doubt, another tough opponent for these rusters. Oh, big hit wow. in the backfield. Ra-Ra Ashford. And I got to tell you, poor Ra-Ra. I mean, he's been the victim of a couple of Big shots here tonight. Remember that one in the first half on the kickoff return? Absolutely. Which he coughed it up. And this time, poor guy just didn't have a chance. Ran into a brick wall. That's what happened. Four wide. Davis still in there at quarterback. Four Cerritos. Play fake. Davis thought about throwing it. This time, Roberts gets to him and throws him to the turf. So a sack there from the talented defensive lineman. For the Russells, who's having, despite the score, a fantastic night is Roberts. I mean, he's been everywhere tonight. It's really been a game, a game for the defensive ends. Roberts for the Russells, by Maona as well. And you got the Thomas brothers on the other side for Cerritos, Derek Thomas and Jordan Thomas. No relation, by the way. But <laughs> I mean, these defensive lines, they, they, they're playing an outstanding game. Uh, the problem for Cerritos, uh, not Cerritos, but 
uh, Golden West defense is that uh, their offense has just put them in bad situations and bad places. And it's just uh, you can't overcome that every time. Now it's Brown taking the screen there. And he's going to be shy of the first down marker. Brings up a fourth down and six. And enter Beto Avila to punt it away. So let's see if number nine could get his hands on the ball here. Markel Johnson, athlete of the year in Vallejo a season ago. Avila, and this one going to be short. Johnson, everybody got to get away from it. They do, and it's going to be downed at the, let's see, they, oh, they say it was touched at the 30. Wow, so a break there for Golden West. That's a big break. It gives them another eight yards that they didn't have uh, when they thought it was going to be at the, the 22 or 23-yard line. And here they are starting off over at the 30-yard line. Uh, 70 yards to go still, and they only have nine minutes and 53 seconds to do it. Uh, not even that, because they got to do more than one score. Uh, so they need to hurry up and, and get their, their game on the ball out here and get a quick score. We got a final in Glendale. L.A. Valley 33, Glendale nothing. And here's a pass deflected at the line of scrimmage. And we talked about those Thomas boys. That was Jordan there that time getting his hands on the ball. And incomplete by Buxa. Glendale falling to 0-4. L.A. Valley improving and remaining undefeated on the year. They put up 19 in the fourth quarter. That game was 14-0 at the half. And L.A. Valley outscored Glendale 19 to nothing in the fourth and final frame. Some other scores have gone final. We'll get them to you. As we move along, here's Tavon Valdez, second level, first down, and more for the speedy back out of Alpharetta, Georgia. Line and able to get downfield, uh, and he's only run the ball what, two times, and both times he's got quite a bit of yardage. Four wide, Books are looking far side in the slot. He has Smith. Pickup of five there, brings up a second down and five. Pasadena City with a win over Southwestern, 38 to 34. Riverside on top of Ventura, 42 to 34. Books are Tried to keep it himself, but runs right into a brick wall in the form of that Cerritos defensive line. Charge there, led once again by the linebacker, Sean Swain. And it's going to bring up a third down and call it six after that loss of one. Elac with a big win down in San Diego over Mesa. Wow, Huskies trailed by 13 going into the fourth and put up a 20 spot. To win that one, 20 to 13. And they improved to two and two on the season. Buxa on third down, slant pass caught. Mouton into the secondary and beyond. Across the 35, down at the 33 of Cerritos. The wide receivers on slants, uh, just uh, poking at that Cerritos defense. Uh, you see they, they, you find a lot of success, uh, especially if they can get the ball on the mark. Books are looking up top that time for Deese. That one incomplete. Led him a little bit too much out of bounds. Elsewhere around the SCFA tonight, Saddleback trailing Elko at home, 42 to 41. That game going to the fourth. We talked about Long Beach City. Going to see them next week. They're trailing Canyons, 42-45 with 4-11 left in the fourth. So a shootout out there at COC. Valdez cuts it to the outside, outside the numbers, Valdez starts and stops, keeps those feet churning and gets it just shy of the 20 yard line, a first down and more. That's your guy, you like what you've seen from number 28 tonight, right Charles? Oh, Valdez has been playing a great game and you, you wonder why they haven't been giving him the ball more. Uh, they, he, he has the speed, he's been able to chop up the Cerritos defense. They haven't been able to stop him. 
Uh, he's run the ball three times, and every time he's touched the ball, he's gotten positive yardage out of it. Uh, so you just keep giving a guy who can get some positive yards, keep giving him the ball. First and 10 at the 20. Buxa rolling this side. Has a man, doesn't even see him across the field, and he throws it, or he runs it rather out of bounds. He had Mouton wide open, single coverage, running across the end zone, and he never saw him. And that's the thing. You, you have to keep your, your eyes open, looking downfield, even when you're on the run. Uh, and, you know, oftentimes these guys aren't catching what is there and they're missing out on points coming down the field. Timeout taken by Cerritos. Their second charge timeout of this half. They'll have one left. Wrestlers have all three in case you're wondering, and they may need them. If they're going to try to make this game a little bit more interesting. 7-13 to play here in the fourth. 29-10 our score. Elsewhere around the SCFA, L.A. Harbor just got tattooed by Bakersfield. 47-6. Victor Valley on top of West L.A. 24-21. Mount San Jacinto with a loss at L.A. Pierce. 49-21. Coach Mazzotta. Was interested in that game, of course, because his son, Casey Mazzotta, the head coach of Mount San Jacinto. So the Mazzotta family had a perfect weekend last weekend. Everybody, all the coaches in the family, including the grandson who plays high school ball out in the Marietta area, they all had wins last week. Um, his other son, Frank Jr., the head coach at La Habra High School. But not so much this week as Casey takes a L. As his Mount San Jacinto team falls to L.A. Pierce, who playing tonight with a new head coach. Buxa going to keep it on the zone read. Picks up a first down inside the 10. So first and goal for the Rustlers. And here they are once again back in the red zone. And they need to come up gotta with something. Got to do something, positive. right? You got to capitalize. You got to get those points. You can't get into this area and not get any points. Mouton scurries to the far side, or to the bottom of your screen, pardon me, the near side. Buxa on a slant, caught Smith. Touchdown, Touchdown Rustlers. The impending point after attempt. 6.40 to play here in the fourth. Point after is up and good by Saul Rodriguez. So Rustler's down by 12. Not a bunch of time left. 640 to play here in this one. Down by two possessions. I don't know. What do you think? Too early for an onside kick? Uh, not an onside kick. Kick it downfield. Uh, try to get them in, in, in as bad a field position as you possibly can. Make them try to work the ball up the field. If your defense can come out there and play like they had previously, get a stop. Uh, you can get the ball back and, and get back in positive field position and possibly get right back to where you were before and get into a, a, another touchdown. So I'd kick the ball downfield uh, and make Cerritos work for it. Uh, and, and then if you're able to do that, uh, you might have a much more positive outcome uh, from this than if you try to do an onside kick. Because if you do that, you're going to give them great field position and then giving them an opportunity to score once again on you. Cerritos expecting an onside kick. They got everybody up. The one deep guy is Ra Ra Ashford. And he runs underneath it at the 13-yard line. Ashford is going to be taken down at the 20 three-yard line. There's going to be a rustler shaking up right near the 20-yard line. Can't quite see who that is from here, but the injury bug has certainly hit the rustlers so far this season. They've already lost three players to ACLs. David Aldapa, the linebacker, down with an ACL injury. And that's unfortunate when you see uh, these young men get hurt out here playing this game. Uh, but you know, uh, it's, a, it's a tough game to play. Uh, you get 
the opportunity to get hurt, uh, but you just hope they don't get hurt. And if they do, that it's a minimal in injury. Uh, that's not something that's long lasting and uh, maybe allow them to be able to get back out there sooner uh, to continue to play. That's Tykeem Murdoch, the injured wrestler, able to limp off under his own strength. Murdoch, the six foot, 215 pound freshman outside linebacker out of El Toro. Darren Sandoval, the backup tailback, tore his ACL last week, and Jacob Beckler tore his last week as well. For the Rusters, is a Bravo in there at quarterback now for Cerritos. Able to find his receiver downfield. Nice job of buying time there and finding Kanati for first down at the 44-yard line. 6-17 to play. Fourth quarter. Clock not on the side of the Rusters here. Hoping to force a three and out. They give up a first down on the first play. Well, here's another opportunity for another three. Oh, fumble. Oh, fumble. Bravo lost it again. This time he falls on top of it. He lost one earlier in this game. And he's, the ball handling issues have just been problematic for him. You, you wonder what the issue is. Uh Take it down with Bravo or even with Pile, Pile too, right? These guys are just the the ball is is not where it's uh, it's being snapped over their head or at their feet, but it's being snapped right into their hands, and they're still not able to hold on to it. Second and eleven. They go to the ground. Nice cut back there by Hall. Hall with some space cuts it across field. Corrali Hall, look out! 30-yard line. He's dragged down from behind at the 28. And that's something that Golden, you, you can't do that. You can't let these guys uh, get these kind of big yards plays uh, because you're just putting yourself in a deeper hole. Now this defense is uh, standing here on their 25, 26-yard line, or, and, and you're, you're, you're still trying to battle uh, in this game. And it's, uh, it's looking more bleak for them because they're not able to stop these guys. They try the left side this time and nothing doing. This is Cerritos team. Frank Mazzotta just not really sure what to expect from his team. Not really sure what type of team he has. As now in week four, but learning more and more as the days go by. And they really like Bravo as a quarterback, but they may have found their guy in Davis. The old adage is, is if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one. Mazota understands that, but they're still trying to figure it out here. But yeah. No I, doubt a, a, an excellent showing from them hey, here Bravo, tonight. Absolutely. Uh, they, they, they both played well. Um, it's just, uh, you know, some guys would rather go with one guy, but you see that they're, they're going with two. Um, and if they're, they're willing to do that, uh, they, they have different qualities and different, uh, skill sets, it seems that they're able to bring to this team. And, uh, that's a, that's a positive for them that they're able to use these different weapons that they have on the field. Third and seven, under three and a half to play. Bravo, pressure coming. He escapes one more time. Flag comes in. Bravo has a man right. wide open. Chuck Wamizi, touchdown Cerritos. It's going to be a hold against Cerritos, so that negates the touchdown. And so our score will remain 29-17. Fourth quarter action here from Falcon Stadium. I mean, at this point, you kind of think Cerritos would try to keep the ball on the ground, let the clock run, uh, and just try to uh, make uh, Golden West do whatever they possibly can to try to win the game. Uh, you're that far ahead of them that they, they don't have that much time to even try to come back. They, they could, but if you keep the ball on the ground and just let the clock run, they're going to have to burn timeouts or do something. Uh, to stop this game from, from moving forward. 3.18 to play. 
Bravo. Incomplete. Looking for Kanadi there that time again. And Ramsey Al Sherman, the wrestler safety there, making the play. I mean, you look at that play right there. I mean, if they ran the ball, the clock is still running. If they, uh, they throw the ball and it's incomplete like it is, the clock stops. That still gives Golden West an opportunity to come back. Fourth down. And Bravo just going to do a little quick kick here. And it takes a Falcon bounce inside the five and down at the two. Boy, when it rains, it pours. I tell you, wrestlers just can't get a break here tonight. There is a flag on the play, however. But I tell you, some of the same issues that plagued this team last week against Chafee have come back to rear its ugly head here tonight in terms of the ball security, in terms of the turnovers. Those are things that against a quality of opponent like Cerritos, you just cannot do. And the wrestlers did some of those things here tonight. And it's, it's come back to haunt them. It's one of those games, perhaps you wish you could just burn the film, but I'm sure <laughs> Coach Nick Mitchell's going to beat him over the head with it with this film throughout the week. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Cerritos, unsportsmanlike conduct against Golden West. Offsetting penalties, it will be first down for the wrestlers, both of those dead ball penalties. I mean, the, the one thing you look at, uh, what the coach is really going to have to look at, it wasn't that they played a bad game. It wasn't like they came out here and, and stunk it up. Uh, the thing that killed them, as we talked about from the very beginning of the game, was their turnovers. Yeah. Uh, turnovers and penalties have killed them throughout this game. And you're not going to win games when you keep turning the ball over uh, in your your side of the field and you're getting penalties after you get positive yards and you're losing that and, and getting taken back even more. And I'm not sure. I don't have any intel or any insight. But so I'm not sure if Joe Pyle had an opportunity to seize the quarterback position. Here's a slant. Mouton with space, 30-yard line, and pushed out of bounds at the 35. Pickup of 33 there from Buxa to Mouton as Russell's going to try to go tempo here. Clock definitely not on their side, but I'm not sure if Pyle had an opportunity to seize the quarterback position here tonight or not. But you think about it, and, and now you certainly got a, a competition on your hands as that one by Buxa is incomplete. I mean, you look at them uh, between Buxa and Pyle, Pyle played a good game. The only problem he had was holding on to the ball. It wasn't like he was throwing the ball away or making – he made a few bad decisions as anybody would. Uh, but he he's able to run with the ball. He's able to throw the ball. He just has a problem holding on to the ball, uh, especially when the ball is being snapped to him right directly to his hands. Uh, Buxa, I mean, we haven't seen that much of him tonight. Uh, he's had some good throws, uh, but he doesn't seem to have the same kind of foot uh, skills that Pyle has, but he's not able to run as well as he is, as Pyle is. Timeout taken there. Buxa snap, sacked there that time. Who else? Jordan Thomas. I tell you, man, this, <laughs> this guy, 56, has been everywhere <laughs> tonight. Coming off that edge, comes up with another sack there. But to, to stick with this quarterbacking theme, and, 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 and I don't know, it's just purely speculation, but and, and even if Powell didn't have, wouldn't have been able to seize the job here tonight, maybe he makes it a little bit more interesting. Maybe he makes it a tougher decision on this coaching staff. But instead, you know, they, they go to the bullpen essentially uh, late in the game here tonight because, you know, somewhat of the ineffectiveness – uh, for this team offensively, and we we talked we, we we talked about how they weren't really throwing the ball downfield. They were they weren't really taking their shots downfield, Golden West offensively, but they were calling pass plays. And whether it was coverage of Cerritos that was superb, 
or whether it was Powell not making the reads. That's something for the coaching staff to have to decipher as they go back and look at the film. Um, but those throws just were not really being made. You see books that come in, and, you know, he's already taken a few shots down the yeah. field. I, I mean, Powell, has, he, he threw some good passes downfield. I mean, they, a couple of them were low. But, you know, we can see that he, he saw the, the, the receiver. They were open. Um, I, I don't discredit him on any of that. It's just that he has he's not able to hold on to the ball. And if you can't hold on to the ball in critical moments, uh, you don't want him out there. Uh, Buxa is out here. He's taking chances, uh, and he's taking chances that he maybe should not be taking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not any better, you know. So, you know, six on one half, half a dozen on the other. You know, both of these guys have skills. Uh, they have a different skill set. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you might want to go with, I, I probably would go with Pyle and hopefully be able to solve his handling of the football. And look, that should be a flag, but I guess they're not going to throw one. Yeah, you hear the coaching staff next to us begging for a P.I. They're not going to get it. It looked like Deese's progress was interrupted there. That previous play, the third down play, went in and out of the hands of Mouton. Fourth down, no flag, so going to be a turnover on downs for the Rusters. And... Cerritos will take over first down and 10 at the Golden West 29 yard line. Don't forget Anaheim Union High Street, Anaheim Union High School District football returns Friday. Loera taking on Bassett 7 p.m. Friday night right here on SportsNetUSA.net. That's just the beginning to your football weekend and we got you covered right here on sportsnetusa.net. Russell's back in action 1 p.m. on Saturday against Long Beach City. And also, you can check out our esteemed colleagues, Mark Pavlovich and Corey Nathan on the call for Fullerton College Football, 6 p.m. against Moore Park as they travel out there to the Conejo Valley Territory. I tell you, though, for uh, Cerritos College, uh, their defense – uh, they, they've been playing uh, awesome out here, and you've been saying Thompson or Thomas. Uh, they need to change his last name to Taylor because <laughs> he's got been, that 56. He's got that 56, and he's coming <laughs> out there just uh, murdering these guys out here. And, and he's got that uh, Lawrence Taylor type of feel to him because he's just running out there, and it's like he's running the muck. Yeah. And he's out here just knocking uh, the fool out of these guys uh, on on the Golden West side and hair uh, on fire. He is on fire. Coming and, off that edge. But here, I think uh, if uh, if Cerritos is smart, they're just going to hand the ball off and, and just let the clock run. Ra Ra Ashford to the 25-yard line, a pickup of five, and a timeout comes the the from the far sideline. So the Rusters will take a timeout on first down. And hopefully trying to preserve some of this clock here. And also, if you're Nick Mitchell, you want to send a message to your team here. I mean, it's odds not necessarily stacked in your favor. Down by 12 with a little over two to play. But that no quit, no give up attitude. You know, this is a different game than the Russells have played all season. Had a blowout win essentially last week. Their first two games were close. Um, so this is the first time this year they've been kind of on the wrong side uh, a, 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 of a double-digit football game. And, and here they are tonight. Very, Just a very uncharacteristic game of this team. I'm, I'm sure Nick Mitchell's still trying to figure out this team. I know he likes this team a lot. I'm sure this coaching staff is still trying to figure it out. Um, there's a lot to like about this team, but just very uncharacteristic tonight. Um, defensively, you know, the defensive line has been so stout. It didn't, didn't really see the impact from them. Uh, you would expect as, as the Cerritos ground game had a tremendous amount of success here tonight. Bravo looking for a fade. Oh, Kanati over the shoulder grab and down at the three-yard line. I expect that, but, you know, here's just a little more sand in your face if you want to call it that. Um, but if you, you look at uh, Golden West, you look at their schedule, the, the, the two wins they have are games that they should have won. Yeah. Uh, and the loss that they had, that was a tough game, you know, tough team to play. Uh, and, you know, that was a real uh, – had to be a real competitive team uh, when they lost that game in here. Play uh, fake 
touchdown. And that extends the Cerritos lead as they're now on top 35 to 17. And that's uh, just a little more sand in the face, letting you know uh, we won this game. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no matter what you do on offense from now on, it's really not going to really going to matter. Null and void, huh? Null and void. But, you know, uh, this Golden West team, I, I expected a lot more out of them tonight. Uh, I knew Cerritos defensive line would be tough. Uh, they have a, a fantastic defensive line. And the linebacker core they have, those guys are awesome. Um, and uh, you know that was going to be their catalyst right there, which would help bring them around. Uh, but you just saw the talent on Golden West, and you would figure uh, that they would be able to overcome that. Uh, but, you know, they just just couldn't match up. And, and the, the problem they had, like, we, you can keep beating a dead horse, but the dead horse is that, they kept turning the ball over at inopportune times, giving up points. Uh, they gave up a safety, uh, give up a touchdown on, on turnovers. You're not going to win the game, and especially if you keep getting a lot of penalties at points in time in the game when you're, you're moving forward, moving downfield, uh, and then you're getting penalties, which are kicking you back uh, uh, 10 yards from where you were. Uh, it, it, you, it's hard to win those games, and they just – that's where the ineffective of, of their game was today. They just, too many penalties and turnovers. And that's something that they really need to work on uh, this coming week before they get prepared for the next game. Ball win the third and Markel Johnson back deep to receive it. It's going to be Johnson. 20-yard line. Johnson with the crease. Johnson with space. Bounces it to the outside. Something we've been waiting for all night long. Johnson gets it across the 45 and out of bounds at the 47-yard line. You see just how elusive he can be whenever he has a chance to touch the ball. Just has not had that many touches tonight in special teams. I mean, when he gets the chance, you see what he can do. <laughs> But the problem with that is the rest of Southern California has seen it on tape as well, so they know not to kick it to the guy. <laughs> and we, we've seen that. We've seen it a lot tonight. We saw it a little bit last week against Chafee as well. But he mentioned something earlier uh, just a little while ago about the safety, and I think that's kind of really where this game turned because Golden West had just scored. They cut it to within four going into the locker room at the half. As that one goes in and out of the hands of Mouton once again. Uh, but they had the momentum. They received the opening kickoff to start uh, the second half. But it was Baldwin receiving uh, that kick and stepping out of bounds at the six. And then the ensuing play was the safety. Right. Two points for Cerritos. And then it was pretty much all downhill from there. Absolutely. And you just see that... Uh when, when you have those negative plays, here's a positive one. Books at a Ratsliff, 25-yard line, tries to spin, but he's going to be corralled there and thrown to the turf by Fulmer. Time and score, they continue. Yeah, they, they, you need to keep fighting. Put some points up on the board. Uh, make some good passes. Uh, they, they, they could have run the ball. Smith from Buxa, touchdown. Rustlers. And that's what they should have been doing all night. That is what they should have been doing all night. But here's an opportunity. Learning experience for running game isn't working. You you have the passing game. And they, they had a guy out there with it, Valdez. Uh, they didn't. They underutilized him. You like uh, him. All huh? night. I, the, the guy was fantastic. I mean, <laughs> if, if, every time he's touched the ball, He's gotten some 10, 15 yards out of it or whatever. He, 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 he was. He, he, no, he looked good tonight. And I th but I think in fairness to the coaching staff, it's probably the best he's looked all season. So he, 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 picked, a, he picked a prime time to, to have that success. But, um, but, but if, it, that is the, if, if that was his, the prime time when he had the first run, then you give him another shot. Don't wait until the next quarter or the next half to do it. 
uh, because then you see that that became a positive thing uh, because the guy they were using wasn't really working out for him. He wasn't getting the yards that he should have got. He was able to cut through the yard, cut through the line, be able to make those cuts, make make that those runs. Uh, he may not have looked as good in previous games, but uh, you're not going to always look great in every game. Uh, but the player who's looking good in that game, you keep giving him the ball and keep letting him Feed in. make him work. For Xavier Smith, that's now his fourth touchdown in the last two games. Rustlers within 13, 55 seconds left. Here comes the onside kick. And this one Ooh. going to be recovered. And whoa, dangerous play there. Onside kick's always dangerous. Coming in there with a head of steam that time was Kevin Jones. And getting the brunt of that. So number 18 for Cerritos. Not sure if they have two number 18s. So not sure if it was Tiave Montgomery or Tyus Arguijo. But he definitely took a shot there. Well, and slow that. to get up. And onside kicks always so dangerous. But Fullerton, or pardon me, Cerritos recovers it. And Falcons going to be able just to come out here and get in the good old victory formation. Unless they fumble it. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo's in there. He held on to it this time, though. He takes a knee. With 46 seconds left in this one. Maybe one more knee will do it for Cerritos. And if you're Golden West, you fall to 2-2. Two and two. Cerritos... You improve to two and two. And for the rushers, somewhat back to the drawing boards. They're still trying to figure out just what type of team they have. Are they the team that blew out Chafee and without a, without a questionable call would have beaten RCC at Riverside? Or are they the team that struggled with Glendale in the opener and had its struggles again tonight against a one and two Cerritos team? Still a lot of questions to be answered for Nick Mitchell and his rustlers as this one has officially gone final. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things. I think the key thing that I have to work on is holding on to the ball. I don't know how coaches work with players to teach them how to hold on to it. Um, the, you know, there was a movie where the coach – Gave the, one of the players the football and told him to walk around campus. Higher and learning. Said, Higher learning. Yeah. Yeah. And he told the guy to knock the, you know, you knock the ball out of his hand, you know, and bring it back to me. You know, maybe that might be something he wanted to do. I have no idea. But whatever it is, however you teach these guys how to hold on to the ball, whatever it is that needs to be done to, to have the, the quarterback be able to catch the ball and, and hold on to it when it's snapped to him, uh, those things need to be reiterated and, and, and worked on. Uh, and then also being careful of the penalties that they make because uh, they got to be smart in the game. And they're, like I said, they've just made some boneheaded decisions uh, with the penalties, uh, especially when they were down here at the, the two-yard line. They had the great run by, by Pyle, but it got turned over just because it was a bad block. Uh, so they, just, they need to just focus on a few things because you look at them and they, they have a lot of talent out there. Their defense is, is very good. Uh, they have a good offense. Uh, but it's just they need to be able to make better decisions. 36-23, our final. We'll step aside. Charles and I will give you our final thoughts along with final stats on the other side of the break. You're watching Golden West Wrestler Football on SportsNetUSA.net. Back here at Falcon Stadium, Rustlers fall to Cerritos, 36-23. to A couple uh, final stats for you. Turnover battle was won by the Rustlers. The score wouldn't indicate that, though. Three turnovers for Cerritos, just one for Golden West. All the turnovers tonight were fumbles. Uh, Rustlers ran 76 plays for 394 yards, 55 plays for 348 yards for Cerritos. Xavier Smith. The high man tonight with six catches for 54 yards and two touchdowns for the Rustlers. Corrali Hall, 11 rushes for 98 yards and a touchdown. Quentin Davis, a touchdown pass. Isaiah Bravo, two touchdown passes for Cerritos as they win this one 
over the rushers. Before we went to break, you were talking about uh, the turnovers and also uh, the penalties. That is a part that they definitely have to hit home this week in practice and just playing this film over their head over and over and over and over. And over. <laughs> I mean, if they showed them the film of this penalty here cost us a touchdown, this penalty here cost us the first down, this penalty here cost us great field position. This penalty here cost us three points or whatever. You go through all the penalties that they had, and they had costly penalties at costly time at a costly time. And uh, if you're going to be a, a winning team or be a championship team, you can't get penalties in those times. Uh, even when they would get a kickoff and they had great field position, there was always a, a, a block in the back. Uh, there was a push. There was holding. There was something that prevented them from being able to be where they needed to be. Um, so that's what I think they really need to focus on uh, is holding on to the ball at crucial times, doing the right thing with the ball at the right time, and when uh, uh, making the right decision of not getting a penalty uh, and, and doing the right thing in the, at the right pl in, in the right play at the right time. Uh, and I think uh, the wrestlers will be okay if they're able to do that. That voice you hear is Charles Williams pinch hitting. For Andrew King tonight, Charles, thanks so much for stepping in and helping us out tonight. Hey, my pleasure. Glad to be here. Uh, if you ever need me or want me again, just call me. Yeah, I think I know where to, where to reach you. <laughs> <laughs> Final score here tonight, Cerritos 36, Golden West 23 with the win. The Falcons approved to 2-2 two two with the loss. The Rustlers fall 2-2-2. Two, two two. Make sure you join us next week. Saturday, 1 p.m. kickoff live from Golden West Field as the Rustlers play host to Long Beach City College, 1 p.m. right here on SportsNetUSA.net. Special thanks to John Van Gasten, the SID here at Cerritos, for setting us up, and also Frank Mazzotta, the longtime head coach in his 40th season here with the Falcons for being so gracious with his time. Nick Mitchell, of course, as always, thanks so much uh, for his time as well. For my broadcast partner tonight, Charles Williams. And Ed Ford, our operations manager, our entire SportsNetUSA.net crew. I'm Rashawn Haylock saying good night from Cerritos. Rustlers lose 36 to 23. You've been watching Golden West Rustler football right here on SportsNetUSA.net.